And welcome everyone to another wonderful, entertaining, agitating edition of We All Be Radio, News Free Dixie for the 21st Century. I'm your host for the Empowerment Segment, Brother Ron, also known as R2, C2, H2, the Harvest. We got a special one for you all. We are on, uh, I guess, last weekend of the last Mercury retrograde of the year. So it's the last Mercury retrograde of the year. And we try to bring you all a little cheer. Uh, but it's a lot to be, um, I guess, excited about, if not just downright anxious about. So this is why we're doing tonight's show. Got a great guest on, Sister Kara Dangerous of Kara Dangerous Talks, which is also featured on Never Leveled uh, TV. That's Never Leveled TV. To also sign up to her YouTube channel. Let me find this YouTube channel for you all. Thank you all for being patiently waiting. Uh, let me see if I find a YouTube channel. This is Kara Dangerous. And I uh, also have another special guest on here. Long time coming. I know. Short got to talk. Oh, yes, he will. Dr. Randy Short will be on with us today as well. Or tonight, rather. He's trying to find. Okay. Let me put that out there. Sister Kara Dangerous YouTube page. Uh, check her out. She got a lot of great guests. Dr. Randy Short, one of the most popular guests on her platform, like he is on so many other people's platforms. Dr. Randy Short got featured, I believe, two times in her season two, um, which she just wrapped not too long ago. I think last week she had on Jane Elliott, but it had some tech difficulties. But she got a lot of great guests on her show, like, you know, Riza Islam was on there. Y'all call him Riza, right? Or Riza, Riza. Whatever the name is, Islam, that brother from the Nation of Islam was on there. She had a lot of interesting people from all walks of life talking about their craft, talking about their life, philosophies. Like the comedian uh, Lunel was on there not too long ago. A lot of great guests. What I like about the sister, she puts people at their ease to do all types of snitching on themselves, confessions, confessionals. So she's pretty good at that. So we'll have her on. Still waiting for her to. Okay, okay, we got her. We're going to have her on. Also, We'll have Dr. Randy Shaw on as well. Let me see. And for all you people that will be in the Memphis area, I got to promote this. It's the 2021 Jimmy Lonsford Legacy Awards. We'll be honoring not only the legacy of Jimmy Lonsford, who really was the king of swing. He was the most popular band leader for black people back in the 30s and 40s. He was known as the Harlem Express, his orchestra. And he was the number one band. He was bigger than Duke and Count and all them guys. Glenn Miller said that Duke was great. Count Basie is remarkable. But Lunsford tops them both. But he's been forgotten about. So it's been our mission at the We All Be Group Incorporated to bring his legacy back to life in the city of Good Abode as well as among, uh, I don't know, it's weird. I'm Memphis educators, musicians, but we're going to be honoring this year. The posthumous uh, queen is Florence Cole Talbert McCleave who was also the first black student, the first black graduate of Los Angeles High School. She was born in Detroit, but she was also one of the first black opera stars. She toured Europe and stuff back in the 20s and the teens and whatnot, and ended up becoming a longtime music educator in the city of Good Abode, Memphis. One of her protégés was, is, uh, was, is Carla Thomas, the queen of Memphis soul, who recently was awarded a uh, 2021 Tennessee Governor's Award our organization nominated Sister Carla Thomas for the award. So Florence Talbert, uh, Talbert McCleave, also uh, Anzi Horn Sr., very gifted music educator and also composer and arranger. He actually arranged G Wiz for Carla at Stacks and he also helped uh, Isaac Hayes with the Shaft theme. He was one of the arrangers on that. Very gifted guy, sold insurance to family business, but his son was told by none other than the great Lionel Hampton that your father is the greatest vibraphonist that he ever heard in his life. And Lionel Hampton was no slouch on the vibraphone. Uh, and also, we'll be honoring the Tim Prees. They are the guys, like, dedicated to the one I love. They are, the, like, the Temptations of uh, Memphis. They stacks artists. They saw their great son back in the day, dedicated to the one I love. Recently got a street renamed after them near their old elementary stumping grounds. So they'll be there putting on a great live performance. 
as well as opera singer and music educator, Dr. Valletta Brinson, phenomenal woman and voice. And I, they, 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 you know, she's the princess this year, along with the princess, the Tempreys, and also the living homecoming court queen, Dr. Bev Johnson, a great radio personality, the voice of, of Memphis, was is our queen. And along with, you know who else, Mr. Einstein, the king of the Chitlin Circuit, the father of folk funk, Dr. Bobby Rush is our king. So we're putting on this thing Halloween night, October 31st, 2021, in Memphis, Tennessee, at the Hollerin Theater, which is located next to the Orpheum Theater. So it's going to be a phenomenal night. We'll live stream it. If you can't join us in Memphis, you can join us online and look at that great lineup and learn a lot of great Memphis music, history, and culture. And a lot of people don't know that Memphis is the most recorded city in American music history. There's more songs related to Memphis than any other place in the country. That's more than Los Angeles, New York, Chicago. Memphis is amazing. So we're going to be honoring not only Mr. Lawrence, but also these people who keep that tradition going. So let me see. And without further ado, we'll have the one and only beautiful sister, Kara Dangerous, thought provocateur like no other, joining us tonight. Tonight is the night. How you doing? Tonight is the night, and we feel it all right. I don't think that's how it goes, bro. <laughs> how you doing? I'm good. I'm you, I'm having a hair emergency. I didn't, wait a minute now. Am I, am I straight? Am I good? I mean, enough you got your light. head on. You good? Is there enough light? Can y'all see me? Let me see. <laughs> I'm brave. You was made out. to be seen. You was made to be seen. Oh yeah, you got your A down, A town down, A town stop. Oh, <laughs> so you got a lot going on. You just wrapped up season two of Carrot Dangerous Talk. Uh, yes, great lineup. How are you feeling? What? A, oh, okay. I'm feeling. I'm feeling great, man. You know, had a great season too. A little shorter than what I thought. I mean, after you do over 40 shows for the first season, I don't know how many I had, but I just know it was a lot. Haven't even finished posting the first season yet, which is crazy. Second season came on Never Level TV, the largest black-owned independent streaming network. Uh, feel very privileged and um, to be able to come on with Never Level. I'm telling you. And, um, you know, it's just been a great season, a lot of great guests. Uh, you know it, Ron. You've been, you've been tuning in. Um, oh, yeah. Got some Amazing. great numbers on the network, you know, gaining a lot of fans in a lot of different places around the world. So really happy about that. As you can see, there's my YouTube. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and sign up for notifications. If you see a gap in me posting right now, that is... I'll be back to posting very soon. Um, so tonight's a special treat because I haven't posted a video in a while. So I said, let me come on here with my main man run. Okay. It feels it feels like a privilege and honor to have you on. And also, you got something coming up at the end of the month as well. Can you talk about that? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, the all-black convention, um, Dr. Boyce Watkins invited me out. You know, he has a big social media following he's a financial expert uh, as well as a social influencer uh a social commentarist and um i'm just i'm just very pleased to be a part of it i'm gonna get a chance to moderate for one of the breakout panels or something like that um not even sure of the full assignment yet i'm just happy to be on the list and um gonna be a great time oh you see it right there so oh yeah, yeah, yeah. your instagram y'all go follow her on Kara dangerous like it'll be a great lineup and it's an honor to have you on i mean you're really doing some amazing things sister uh really amplifying these important messages helping people to amplify their messages you really are uh, i guess this is your ministry so to speak because like you get folks to confess things they normally not comfortable confessing which is like i guess a gift for you you make people really feel at ease being themselves and you no know, telling telling on themselves how you feel about that? Well, I'm going to answer your question, but scroll down on that so they can see the location. You can still buy tickets to this convention. It's in Champions Gate, Orlando, Florida, um, at the Omni Resort at Champions Gate, excuse me, um, Orlando, Florida. But as far as uh, your question, you know, I just try to welcome people and be sincere and um, 
and have a great a great talk and i won't say conversation since it's care dangerous talk i just try to have a great talk with them and you know help them to feel welcome and comfortable and i grew up being able to do that i'm from the south and our main thing is making people feel welcome and loved on when they're in our when they're in our space so when they come on care dangerous talk it's like they're coming to the south again we i want you to feel welcome come get this homegrown talk and um enjoy it and then after the show you can get the itis because you're so full of everything that we talked about <laughs> that's excellent that's good stuff like you move in the right direction so like i said there's a lot to talk about we got dr Randy show on the day as well uh so let's get started i mean you got a sports broadcasting background and whatnot and uh a lot of things happen in the world of sports but i just want to get your take on uh the Kyrie irving situation or irving situation Okay, and after this, I just got something I want to bring up, too. Just want to throw that out there. But Kyrie Irving, you know, all I know is he doesn't want to take the vaccination. And then the rest that I know is that a bunch of people stated their opinions about it, of course, right? Mm -hmm. So that's Stephen A. Smith from ESPN's First Take, NBA reporter. Um, he made his statement about it that a couple of people didn't, a lot of people, not a couple of people, a lot of people didn't agree with, right? And then we have you know, just the NBA, other, other NBA reporters reporting it on it. And, you know, a lot of people backing up Kyrie saying that, you know, look, don't jump on him. Don't bully him. If he doesn't want to get the vaccination, it's his body. I mean, we even seen Luke, Luke from Shake Your Booty, Shake Your Rump in Miami. That Luke, he even, he even stepped out to say, well, if women um, are over control of their bodies and whatnot, I guess he's trying to insinuate abortions um shouldn't a man be able to control what he puts in his body or you know just trying to compare those things um so you just seen all kind of people speak out on it but you know Rod, i think it comes down to freedom to do we as americans we have a freedom of choice i mm -hmm. guess we we have that right <laughs> so <laughs> well. you, you, you know so he won't Kyrie won't be able to play in practice or play at any home games and i have it here so he approximately he'll lose uh 380k for every home game he misses now okay. that sounds like a lot of money to uh, you and i even though Kyrie is a millionaire that 380k will add up there's a lot of home games in the nba season so i think um he's gonna he's gonna fail it at some point yeah i mean it is a lot of money it's 41 times he's gonna lose 380 some million dollars or thousand dollars dude 380 some thousand dollars Right. That's 41 times he's going to lose that. And my, my thing about this is, to me, Kyrie is the person that people thought Cal, uh, Colin Kaepernick would be or they want Le LeBron James to be. Because like Ali, Muhammad Ali, Ali wasn't facing any danger by, you know, getting signed up on the draft. You know what I'm saying? He, they were not going to put him on the front lines. He probably been educ I mean, entertaining the troops. But he decided to take a stand that cost him three years of his prime at least and a lot of money and endorsements and whatnot. And Kyrie don't really have to do this, but he's going to lose a lot of money and might get kicked out the league perhaps because of this stance. Mm -hmm. So to me, it, it means more because Colin Kaepernick actually had a golden parachute with Nike behind the scenes. From my understanding, he had the deals in place and I don't like my heroes to be too damn quiet. You know, this year, oh, this week rather is the anniversary of the founder of the black Panther party for self-defense in Oakland. And Huey and them guys were not quiet. You know what I'm saying? They were loud. They want you. And also they encourage folks to read up on the law and other things of that nature. Not just posing, but also study. They advocated studying the law and reading about history and whatnot. Uh, so uh, it, it is an interesting time to be alive. And also I got to ask you about, have you seen the Dave Chappelle special? Dave Chappelle, you know what? When I got home from a trip, I turned Dave Chappelle on while I was relaxing. I heard most of it. Some of it I tuned out and started doing some other things. But for, I got the gist of it. Um, I want to wait. Can I finish up on this Kyrie thing first? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So with, with, with Kyrie, though, I I heard you, you know, when we was talking just together, you compared him to Muhammad Ali. I'm not there yet. I'm not there to compare Kyrie to Muhammad Ali. Uh, for me right now, that's a stretch. This reminds me of when Nicki Minaj stepped out and said something about vaccination. And there, and um, Brandon T. Jackson, who came on my show, was like, 
oh, she's ready for the kingdom. Maybe I can put her in a movie role. I'm just like, for what? For just speaking out against a vaccination? I, I mean, it's uh, the reason I'm bringing that up is because a person can do so wrong so many times. They do one little thing, and we're ready to compare them to Muhammad Ali. Calm down, Ron. I don't think what I think, but I think he's been consistent. Like the flat earth theory, he actually put you know, spoke out about boycotting the NBA. He has done things over the years, he's been very consistent with advocacy. Now, you know, you think about Ali and them 50 something years ago. Earth, oh, excuse me, my bad. A flat no, you're right. <laughs> compare him, his theory of thinking that there's a flat earth to Muhammad Ali. No, what I'm saying is he's used to being courting controversy. He's used to being that person out there on his own advocating for unpopular points of views. My thing with uh, Dave Chappelle and Kyrie, they're controversial, but also they're popular at the same time. I've never been popular. I've always been tolerated. I always be, oh, there go run, Mr. Bad News. People say stuff like that. When all I advocate is for knowledge yourself and research and, and, and speaking your point of view. But with Kyrie, I'm not necessarily uh, comparing him to Ali, but to me, he comes closer. Colin Kaepernick is no Ali. LeBron is no Ali. But Kyrie has put a lot on the line in terms of this earning a living. Uh, it's funny, like I look at Kareem, some of his point of views on things. Like, he was an activist, a scholar, athlete, an activist. I just don't agree with a lot of stuff he's talking about right now, but you can't take away his legacy of being an advocate. And you look at the athletes, I think it's too much to ask of them to be an Ali because back then the athletes were closer to the working class than they are now. Because like a lot of professional athletes had to get jobs in the off season just to maintain. You know what I'm saying? Like they were blue collar people, Ron, a lot of the guys. Ron, you're the one who compared them to Ali. No one did it but you. <laughs> I think people thinking it though. I hear people, I see people no, saying. No, I was not. First of all, I like Kyrie as far as he can play basketball really good. I like him when he dresses up as the old man. Uh, I forgot what you call him. I seen the little movie. Yeah, Drew, movie. Uncle Drew. I even like his sneakers. But look, I haven't seen Kyrie be black and pride, proud. I haven't seen him been proud of anything since he discovered he was a Native American Indian. Mm-hmm. I mean, and don't get me wrong, I think it's good that he can stand on his two feet and 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 stand up for what he believes. And I'm I'm with him on that. I'm not disagreeing with that at all. I'm just saying I don't know if you can compare him to Muhammad Ali just because he doesn't want to take the vaccination. I mean, I think that if you follow Kyrie, he's taking this Native American background so seriously. They even said that he comes to the games early. He's in the gym where they're going to play that night, and he and he brings sage that the Indians would use, and he sages the arena. This is how serious Kyrie is. So mm-hmm. in saying that, you know how Native Americans were about health and their bodies. So I think he's taking it from that stance more than it is – a black stance of you that makes sense at all. I think Muhammad Ali had more self pride in just being black, but yeah, of course he's standing on his principles, and I am proud of that. I I do tip my hat off to him for that. Yeah, but I even go farther that Muhammad Ali can't compare to Paul Robeson. You know what I'm saying? Paul Robeson, you know, he was a lawyer. Five, you know, he one of the first black All American football players, one of the pioneers of the NFL. Uh, does speak over 20 different languages fluently, one of the greatest singing voice, voices of all time. He lost a lot, you know, in terms of, I mean, Ali lost a lot, but Paul Robeson was crucified for like decades of activism and speaking out. And he had to do that. He sacrificed not only his career, but also his, his health and sanity, speaking out on behalf of, of not only just black folks, but oppressed people. And I think to me, I'm not looking for no he rules, she rules, nothing like that. I respect the person that's willing to put their money where their mouth is and willing to take sacrifices just to make a point, regardless it's about the jab or not to jab. But the fact that he's willing to put his career and his ability to make money on the line, like like Nicki Minaj, I think about Eartha Kitt back in the 1960s. I love Eartha Kitt. I, I mean, I was, I was looking at uh, St. Louis Blues, the not too accurate accurate biography about uh, WC Handy played by Nat King Cole, that all star cast, Cal Holloway, all them guys. But Eartha Kitt spoke her mind about the Vietnam War to the first lady of the United States, Lady Bird Johnson, in the White House, and she was blackballed for years mm-hmm. for doing that. So, we ask a lot of these celebrities to be these leaders and, and trendsetters, but a lot of times we don't support the right ones. I even look at Nick Cannon, 
who Dick Gregory loved. And Nick Cannon folded as soon as the pressure was turned up, the heat was turned up on. So it refreshing to you. That's my point. It's because you get happy when somebody does one thing. You're not looking at their track record. It's like, I'm not going to, you're not going to just do one thing and I'm going to bring you into the group. I think that's the problem. We can say, yeah, he's sending on his principal. That's fine. But you can pad on his situation to Muhammad Ali. That's the only reason I'm bringing it up. Yeah. I mean, it comes closer to me. I mean, in terms of personal sacrifices and and financial stability, because a lot of us who advocate uh, unpopular opinions, we get, you know, they try to break you. They try to black ball, white ball, whatever ball you. Uh, they try to uh, marginalize you, shadow ban, whatever they want to call it. But I'm saying for him to be popular and, and controversial, I mean, he's, he got like over 15 million followers on uh, Instagram alone. And also the, also not give in the peer pressure. And like I said, he, t- he has taken on unpopular positions before it has not broken. Yeah, Unlike some people like that. Nick Cannon. Yeah, but I'm just saying, I, I'm, I, I felt like he was trying to label him a freedom fighter. I mean, he does take different positions. But I, let me just say this. Mm-hmm. Andrew Wiggins, who plays for Golden State. Andrew Wiggins, yeah. He what the name was is. one of those that was going to miss the home games, wasn't going to be able to practice, and then he just kind of folded after, you know, the pressure and trade rumors and all that. Mm-hmm. And because he said, like, if it, it goes to – if he's forced to do it, he will do it. So once it came to, hey, you won't get paid, then he said, look, put my hat back into this ring. Or whatever, and I'm and I'm gonna take the shot. So, yeah, Kyrie, good for you for standing up to what you believe. And a good point he made. He said the reporters they'll get on TV, they'll talk about me, but they won't say it to my face. I didn't get to see Stephen A's response, but I'm sure he he addressed that and probably said he will say it in his face. I'm 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 pretty sure he said that. Well, I, yeah, even I mean I heard things. I haven't read everything. Even Jamil Hill and other people have really trying to put pressure on him. It reminds me, you know, uh, the loneliest month birthday was just on October the 10th. He's one of my favorite musicians of all time. And people don't really appreciate that uh, the, the influence of the loneliest month, but the hell he caught while he was living. He was not appreciated by critics and other people. They ridden him off. But the loneliest month is the second most recorded jazz musician behind Duke Ellington. And he only wrote 70 songs and his round midnight is the most recorded jazz song of all time. This guy only wrote 70 songs. Duke wrote over 3,000 plus songs. But yet, Monk had to pay some dues. They, re- I mean, people wouldn't come to his shows and stuff like that, but had he not endured, mm-hmm. a lot of things we, we take for granted now we would not have in terms of, if you look at a late night show or you look at a commercial, you, you're hearing elements and echoes of Thelonious Monk's music. Mm-hmm. So he took a stand just by artistic integrity and being a man. And you look at Dave Chappelle. Like I tell you, Dave Chappelle's the Virgo, right? He remind me of Charlie Parker. Yeah, I can make music and make you dance, but I want you to listen. Yeah, I can tell jokes that can make you laugh, but I also want you to listen to what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is, you see, it's the black man that's masculine who got to take these type of stands in order to move society forward. But the Lonely's Monk was a family man. He was a straight black man. He took these stands to move the music forward. Kyrie Irving is a, is a black masculine man. He's not wearing dresses. You look at or uh, Russell Westbrook or Dressbrook or whatever, he did that documentary on Tulsa, Oklahoma. Then by the end of the year, he wearing a dress. And all that was about destroying, undermining black masculinity, Tulsa. Because when the black men were fighting back, they were winning. But as soon as they turned their guns themselves over, the whole town got, or that part of the town got burnt down. See, it all comes down to, are we going to support and promote black masculinity? Well, you know what? I'm glad you brought it up. Now, you was asking me a question before I kept going on Kyrie. Go ahead with that next question you was going to ask me. Well, I'm going to ask you about Dave Chappelle. Like, have you seen his latest special and what's your thoughts about the fallout or about the special about Dave or whatever? Well, oh, like I was saying, I watched some of it while I was relaxing after a trip. And mm-hmm. um, I felt like that whole special just to address the trans community. I mean, if you were looking for just Dave Chappelle comedy, be hitting different points, maybe at the parts I wasn't paying as much attention to. Maybe he talked about something else. But um, that's all I got from it. I mean, at some point I was like, okay, I would like to hear something else. But then I just said to myself, hey, obviously Dave needs to address the trans community, the LGBTQ. So this was basically a special for them. 
um i mean he brought up some great points valid facts um when you look at the support the lgbtq um receive and the things they're able to get done i mean we see how president biden supports them and president obama supported them and to getting things uh, put into action with laws and making sure that they're safe and on jobs and everything but when it comes to uh just the human rights that black people haven't been able to receive or their lack of respect you know that is something to point to and then when you look at the history of the LTBGQ, I don't have all the facts about it, but I know that the symbol came from a, 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 a was broken down from a black organization symbol. They took the rainbow, which I think used to be, it wasn't as colorful, but they took part of a, you know a black organization and mixed it into their thing. And we've seen white people do that a lot of times when it comes to black people. They need our support in order to get. Um, to where they need to get like the feminist movement you know mm-hmm. the white feminists had to come out and recruit black women which was really a detriment to us because the black women and the black men were kind of solid during those times and they it's almost like they they made an extra issue by coming in and recruiting uh black women so when i see black feminists today i'm just like do you know really about that movement because why are you a feminist now don't get me wrong, Run. I was that girl when I was in middle mm-hmm. school. Um, I tried to play football at recess with the boys, tag football. Uh-huh. Let me tell you, one of our white coaches who coached middle school football, I believe it was, he did not want me to be out there. But I said, no, I'm going to do this for girls. This is for all the women everywhere. I'm going to get out here and I'm going to play football. So I remember, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was two other girls from my class. They were like, yeah, Kara, do it for the girls. So run. We out uh-huh. there playing. That we out there playing so hard. I somehow somebody threw me the ball. Run. I'm telling you, I'm going run. I see, I see the touchdown from here, baby. I'm I'm I'm, I'm running. The next thing uh-huh. I know, bam! Somebody hit me, man, on the side. Run. Uh-huh. I know that the dudes hit me on purpose because this uh-huh. was because they did not stop and come back and look at me. They didn't come help me or anything. The coach didn't blow the whistle. Now you can't get away with this in school today. But the coach I had, they were very traditional. They wanted boys over here, girls over here. And I couldn't even move. I was so hurt from being hit. Wow. That the two females, they were taller than me in middle school. They picked me up. They literally carried me up the recess steps back up to the top of the building. Okay. Because mm-hmm. we played down in the field. And I and that lesson never uh that met that lesson never left me run because when I look at females, be a feminist, I'm like, I get what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. But that lesson taught me no matter how tomboyish I am, I am not a man. Okay. And it also taught me that I don't want to be hit like that. As a female, I just, our bodies are built different. I don't, I don't, right. I forgot what was the reason for me even bringing this up, but I'm sure in the whole mess of things, it makes sense to you. <laughs> the point <laughs> is, is that there's a place for everyone and we're in a society now where everybody wants to be in every single thing and some things that you're just not supposed to be into right you're just not god didn't make you able to do this and do that you can get rid of the genders all you want but naturally how god made us some things women just their body isn't made to do some things men aren't made to do right and he made us like that for a reason. I'm done. That's it. No, that's good. Kyle. I gotta ask you too. Speaking of speaking of men, I you on you. I say you got a sport sports broadcasting background. I gotta ask you about the John Gruden situation with the emails, where you know this guy got fired from the NFL for some emails he said when he was not employed by the NFL. Okay, so John Gruden and my brother-in-law, we talked about this. Shout out mm-hmm. to Arthur Coleman. You know, my brother. Brother Arthur Coleman, Arthur. salute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I I worked with John Gruden not a lot of times. Wow. I, I But I'll be honest, I didn't see him a lot of times. I didn't work with a lot of times at ESPN. But I do remember one particular time I was walking by the mini calf, my favorite spot. That's like recess for adults where my coffee and snacks are. And he mm-hmm. was coming the opposite way. And I stopped him in the hall. He was wearing his Super Bowl ring. Okay. And I think he had on more than one. Maybe he had on one. 
and I, I said, oh, my God, let me look at your ring. And uh, I said, he said, nice, right? I said, yeah, that's nice. But I had never heard of his racist past. But what I've been hearing from people is this is no new coincidence. He's had issues in the past. You know, when Antonio Brown didn't want to um, be on the Raiders, there were some issues then, but I think people were more concerned about Antonio Brown behavior than they were kind of looking at John Gruden at the time. But I mean, look, I don't know all the specifics of what's going on, but obviously this is a guy who has a track record of saying some off-putting things sexually mm-hmm. uh, about people's race and all that jazz. So he just reaping what he sows. And if you watch the news from top to bottom or bottom to top, Everybody's saying his career is over. He won't be able to commentate. He won't be able to coach. He'll just be sitting at home. I mean, my, yeah, my thing is, like, why are black folks mad at John Gruden? The stuff that John Gruden, I mean, you should be mad at Joe Biden for actually saying and doing things that's detrimental to you. But John Gruden, with his opinion, should not even matter. As far as I think black folks got this love affair with white people because John Gruden is just a man. He's not a God to me. He's not my God. I don't care about what he think about too much anything. Opinions, I just like what they say, like a butthole. You know, everybody got one, right? So, like, with John Gruden, to me, he never was a great head coach. Like, he got in on the coattails of Tony Dungy. They like, just like when Mark Jackson helped build up the Golden State Warriors culture and they got Steve Kerr to come in to, to reap the benefits of that. I mean, John Gruden never proved himself to be a great head coach to me. He's a great color commentary. Uh, commentator, excuse me, or analyst. He's enjoyable. Listen to him talk about football. He knows about football. He's a great assistant or even quarterback coach. But to me, he always been protected. You know, uh, to me, to be honest with you, Joe Biden makes John Gruden look like John Brown. <laughs> like, you know, brother in law is over here shaking his head like this. You he like, he look like John Brown. You know, tomorrow is the anniversary of the Hopper Ferris raid, October 16th. 1859, John Brown with his five black raiders raided Harper's Ferry, which is now known as West Virginia, which helped start the American Civil War, but also the Million Man March. And also you talk about the Rainbow Coalition. You know, that was the, the brainchild of Chairman Fred Hampton Sr. of the Black Panther Party, who was assassinated by the state government, uh, United States or United Snakes. Uh, but he started the concept of Rainbow Coalition, bringing in different races to work together. Then Jesse Jackson, whose birthday was on October the 8th, he just turned 80 years young. Shout out to Jesse. I don't know. I got. I met Jesse a couple of times. I even interviewed him. I got a different take on Jesse than a lot of other people do. Uh, to me, he has done some good. You know, you can't don't compare him to Al Sharpton. Don't compare him to Al. He actually did things. Al has not done anything. Well, we're gonna we bring to on Dr. Dr. Short later. Yeah, we I would not. Sure, I know Dr. Short gonna tell. Please, I think please I think bring that up. Story. He please got some Jesse stories, up. but I'm saying I'm glad that he you know he made it to his eight old. I met Jesse. A couple of times I talked to him. He's at a, like Dick Gregory said he had one of the finest minds on the planet. Dick might not may not have liked Jesse, but mm-hmm. he always gave Jesse his propers. And I talked to folks in the movement; they may not personally like Jesse, but they know he's not a dummy. And he right. actually did some stuff. So we got to be honest about that as we critique people. We got to give them their propers, like we say about Kyrie. Okay, yeah, yeah, but then you got to have a balance and the ebb and flow to everything. But yeah, but John Gruden, I mean, to see Randy Moss crying, Randy crying. Hey, on, hey, like, what's he cried because John Gruden got fired? He cried because he learned that John Gruden is a racist. He said, uh, he said, but do you okay that the players ain't the right, the, the DeMaurice or DeMaurice Smith, he said he had lips like Michelin tires. He do got big ass lips. I got big ass about, lips. Let me tell you something about Randy. What's his name? Randy Moss. From Randy West Moss. Coast. Um, Randy Moss, great football player, great receiver, whatever. He catches the ball. He worked with me as well. Never got to meet him up close because I just never worked on that show at the same time he was on. But if you look at his past, I've seen the documentary of him several times because I had to work in the ESPN when I worked in Master Control. And he comes from a very small town. I mean, obviously you hear I'm from the South, but I'm talking about his, his town is very small. I mean, mm-hmm. people hanging out at the gas station all day long, the <laughs> teenagers, that, that kind of place. Right. Right? And let's just say he came up. The only reason I'm bringing it up is not to insult small time people, but just to say, mm, Randy showed some of the people he hangs with and he grew up with 
and not a lot of education there. Mm-hmm. So some of his opinions, um, I'm not going to say he's coonish per se, but mm, he, cause he speaks out sometimes on different things, but yeah. he, he just a little, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Farmer, farmer. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I hear you. Not, I hear on you. Field, not on the field, but you know, He's emotional too. Have you ever seen uh, oh, yeah. Randy Moss on TV? He's emotional. It, it very much so. It, it shows like he reminds me of like Iverson. Iverson comes from Virginia. He's coming from the country too. I mean, you no, know, he, he hangs out with a lot of white folks and football is God in that country where they come from. Sports is king. You know what I'm saying? You can't do no wrong if you're a sports star. But I don't look at Randy as a Malcolm X. You know what I'm saying? We got to stop looking at these celebrities to be liberators and freedom fighters, as you say. I don't look at Kyrie as being on the level of a Paul Robeson. You know, Paul Robeson was an artist, but he knew artists had a had a responsibility to speak out. Like you look at Billy Holiday with Strange Fruit, right? You know, and that cost mm-hmm. a lot of a, a, a peace of mind and also financial mm-hmm. stuff. You think about Nina Simone in the Mississippi Goddamn. Nina mm-hmm. paid a price. They they crucified Nina Simone. But we don't talk about the folks that stand up for us that love us like that. We rather uh uplift folks that hate us, that mm-hmm. despise us. You know, the people that get the most love in this world, they hate people. They despise people a lot of times. It's like you could be a philanthropist and still hate people. To be a philanthropist, you don't have to be no humanitarian to be a philanthropist. Oh, it's just a tax course. write-out. Of course. And like I told people, uh, Kwame True said, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Stokely Carmichael, he said, look, I love my people, but they some hard people, okay? So, mm-hmm. you know, you can want to help all the people you want, but when you do it all the time and it's part of what you do and what you breathe, you can't have, you can't be frustrated. But a lot of times these people who are freedom fighters, they're so good at masking that frustra- frustration and turning it into the passion that we see on a data with them going out there and fighting. Before we move on, I just want to tell people, if you're looking at my scenery, run, can you show me in full or something like that? Yeah, I, I just want y'all to know I, I took some time oh, tonight. Myself, right? No, that's not me. That's you. Okay, I took some time tonight. I'm actually live from outside, okay? So I'm very proud of that. So thank you for myself for hooking this up. Had a little help from my brother-in-law. But, um, yeah. So anyway, I got a fire pit going that you can't see. Got some s'mores that I can put on later. And we just outside tonight. Got my wine. Got a cigar. We're just having a good time tonight. Okay, bring you back. Bring yourself back, Ron. Just want to show y'all what I was up to. Everybody, that's good. It's a nice setup. I hear the symphony going with nature. Mother Nature got you a symphony back there. Oh, yeah. Down Do I sound, good. but you can hear me good, though. Yeah, right? I hear you good. Yeah, it adds to the ads. I got to ask you because you do have what up? What's up with this girl? This, this uh, Kung Fu lady, Sage Steel. What's her, what's her issue? She hates black people. She hates a black daddy. She got a black daddy. What's going on with her? Wait a minute. She come in every now and then in the news cycle and still got a job. I guess white zaddy love him. I would love to have Sage still on my show. Mm -hmm. Um, I reached out to her. Hopefully, uh, look, hey. What I want to say about Sage still is this, and I want y'all to listen to me in full first. I worked with Sage still for a lot of years. We we get along great. Ron, we get along great. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, on my show, when Dr. Randy Short comes on, or just even by myself, I'm so anti-coon. Everybody knows that. I'm anti-coon. Right. But say still was always nice to me. So I got to break this issue down. It can't be black and white for me. She say still was nicer than me than some people that y'all think is so black behind the scenes. Okay? Mm-hmm. Anytime I was in the studio, she was happy to see me. And she would say, Carrie, I'm so glad you're here. Now, I did hear my my um, old colleague and associate and somebody I like a lot, Jamel Hill, talk and say that, you know, Sage is very conservative. And she is. And Jamel brought up on Dan Laboratory's um, show um, that Sage would make comments about other anger's attire. And I do know Sage is very conservative, especially when it comes to even how she dresses. Um, but she's one of those women that I mean, I I was asked several times by different people working at ESPN, how is Sage? She's hot. I got a crush on her. Mm. So even though she's conservative, she still has sex appeal, obviously, because men would always ask me about her. And then 
I'm basically trying to say is that I've, I've heard her say comments or I heard, had people come to me to say, oh, well, Sage told me maybe I shouldn't post this picture or something like that. But, you know, I don't really have a problem with that, Ron. I don't have a problem with a woman, especially in this day and age, being conservative as far as clothing goes. Now, I'm not one of, to be like, oh, well, it's not okay for this woman to wear that. I mean, unless you Lizzo and you're just being ridiculous, but Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that side of stage. I think the issue that's deeper is this mulatto issue. Okay. And until black people really take a look at that issue, what are we really talking about? Okay, it's several parts of this story. Okay, for one, okay, Sage talked about Obama. Now, this mm -hmm. is the part I didn't like. It wasn't that she talked about Obama. It's, it's what she said. She said that how can he just call himself part black but his dad left him so wouldn't he want to honor the white part like he it was something that, like your yeah. dad wasn't there for you so why would you even claim the black part got mm -hmm. a big problem with that got a big problem with that but this is what i want people to think about this other piece of that okay if sage is mulatto and normally i'm one of those people that say they got to understand they black okay normally i'm one of those people when, but when i thought about it this is what I want to let y'all know. My mother, my mother always said, if you start off with something little, you'll you'll do something big. Like when I was a kid, I stole a piece of a small piece of chocolate from the store, and I ended up telling on myself. And my mom made me take it back to the store run. And mm. the owner, he wanted to give me a bigger piece of chocolate. It had coconut in it, though. I said, yeah, but I didn't really want it. But the point was, if if I didn't tell on myself, and my mama didn't make me go back to the store to take it back. Who knows? Maybe I would have turned into a serious robber later. Mm -hmm. So my point with Sage is that if she's mulatto and she wants to say she's white, okay. If we got men and women who can say that they are woman but they are man, why can't Sage say she just white then? Now, I'm not agreeing with her, but I'm just asking you, if one thing is crazy, then why isn't that shit crazy? Mm -hmm. Okay. She's married to a white man, right? She's married but to a white gonna, man. I want y'all to listen to what I'm saying now, because I've seen anchors that I know talk about Sage, and I'm not saying I agree with her, but if a woman can tell me that they are man now, and a man like Bruce Jenner can win Woman of the Year after dressing like a woman, cross-dressing like a woman for one year, then why can't Sage, whose mother's white and father's black, say she's white? If she don't want to be black, we don't need her now yeah we know the world look at her like she's black but why do we want turncoats to want to be black i don't want people anymore who don't want to be black if you don't want to be black then we don't need you okay and uh, is she married to a white man too is she married white is she... she was i i heard some people say she was divorced i'm not sure but she does identify mostly with her white side than the black side if we well, I've heard some people say she acknowledged the black side. I've never had a conversation with her about her race. I've seen, I mean, she brought her father to work. They did a whole veteran story about her dad. So obviously she knows she's part black or black because her dad's black. She she talks to her father. Her father didn't leave her unlike Obama's dad. So, but you got to, y'all got to make stuff make sense across the board. We're mm -hmm. trying to pacify one group. But we got to tell this other group, you can't be what you want. I can't even be black and free, but a man could be a woman. A woman can be a man. Okay, and if that's the case, then you can't get mad at Sage for saying she white. Y'all black folks, you let that white lady that, that got the crochet braids, y'all let her join the NAACP, mm. NAACP. You let her go to college and tell everybody she black. And I see black women all in the comments. Well, if she want to be black, let her be black. If she want to be black, let her be black. Okay, y'all promote that, but y'all mad at Sage. Now, is she ignorant? Hell yeah, Sage is ignorant. And I like her as the sweet person she is. But mm -hmm. y'all got to make your choices. I'm done. That's all I got to say. I don't know issue. I know if you talk about that, I know two sisters. Um, one I went to college with some years ago, but their mom is white and their dad is black. And, you know, the other sisters that I didn't know that well, but I knew she ended up marrying a white man and having a baby 
with him. But the other sister that I know, she prefers black men. She identifies as being black. So, I mean, I respect both of these women and I I respect them and their points of views. And But, like, you know, one sister identifies mostly with the white side. The other sister identifies mostly with the black side. I guess and they both right. They, you know, live their life. I don't really... See, it's getting to bedroom politics is tricky because you start people in the people's bedroom. You see practices they do you might not agree with, but if they got things from a public point of view that you can stand with, support those point of views. Don't necessarily don't necessarily put anybody on a pedestal. I don't need no more heroes. I need solutions. But my thing is, I'm not gonna stand here and let people be fake either, because like okay. I know plenty of black people who get on TV. And act like they so black, but when you see them, they won't even speak. Sage mm. will speak to you, and okay. nobody better come in with with me with no care of being hypocritical because I'm really not. Y'all gotta listen to what I'm saying. The only thing I'm saying is that Sage has always treated me nice. Now I can't lie, and I'll tell her this as she come on my show. There was a time when she had came back from ESPN in LA, and she had came back the to the the mothership in Connecticut, where mm-hmm. me and this other coworker. I'm not gonna say who it is, but they that person was stating, you know, she's been saying, and at that time, uh, it was just recent to when she had said something else crazy about race. There was a time where she even let a white man touch her hair on Sports Center, and for black people, I was like, whoa, 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 why is she why is she making them make her a clown on TV? So it was past stuff that she had done as well. But the whole point is, is that. I did have a moment there where I didn't know what I wanted to do with her. I was like, she treats me so nice, but, you know, I'm not really on no coon stuff. So what do I do with that? What What do you do when a person is nice to you, but what they speak out their mouth and what they feel politically doesn't align with you? I mean, you can agree to disagree and still be civil. Okay, so that's what I am. I'm civil. So that's why I can't get on here and lie. I'm going to tell you all the truth. Sage is a nice woman. And anybody who get on TV and say Sage is a butthole, they either lying or they just have a different relationship with her than I had. I'm not trying to say me and her were lunch buddies. I'm just telling you that I worked with her a, through a lot of years and she's always been pleasant, that no matter the race. And some of those other black people who you think would be pleasant, they were not. I, I respect that. I mean, that's why we, we talk about these things. I don't really get, want to get caught up in the code of personality on anybody. Now, somebody said it could be fake, and I have to be honest with you, that's true, but I have to be, if you watch my show, I talk about discernment all the time. I'm not a mm-hmm. person who just take people face value. I use my discernment, and I didn't feel like she was being fake, because Sage is, she's not, she's blunt, too. Yeah. And anybody know me, know me know I'm blunt. So she would actually laugh at some of the things I would say right there in my face. So I think she didn't, she wasn't fake with me. I could name some people that was fake with me, but I ain't even gonna put them out there like that because I'm not even like that. I could tell you some people you do know that were fake. Okay, so I know fake energy. She's not fake. It's just that I never had a race conversation with her. But I do want to bring up this point before we drop this run. Mm-hmm. Rachel Lindsay, who also started working and doing on air commentary who was the first black, or I think just the first woman bachelorette, she actually picked a white man um, for her bachelor, you know, to um, be her fiance or whatnot. She said to say still, when that happened, she came up to her and said, you know, I'm happy that you chose a white man and not a black man. Now that, I I can't tell you that surprised me Mm -hmm. because of her history. But I was surprised in the fact that Rachel actually said it. Mm. She actually oh. said it. But if you ask me, do I know if, if she has some issues with her race? Then yes, she definitely does. Um, She definitely does. But I have to tell you, I got some mixed people further down in my family. And they act more black. But I don't think I'm the only person who had this experience, but when you meet mulatto people, they normally add two or three ways. They either the type of mulatto person that only hang with white folks, okay, or they the type of mulatto person or mixed person. I don't know what you're calling yourselves these days. I want to be respectful. Are they the kind of are they the kind of mulattoes who only hang with black folks? And a lot of times, let's be honest, you mm-hmm. can look at them and tell which one they are. Now, just be honest. Just be honest. 
Just like you could, uh, tell uh, women, you could tell a lot of times when a white woman sleep with black men because they got that haircut, they drive that certain car, they got that look. You know what I'm talking y'all. Y'all gonna keep it real. I know y'all didn't stay keep me up tonight, and y'all ain't gonna keep it real. Some people just got the look. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they get interesting, good points that people need to consider. But yeah, I, I, I don't have no hate or love hate with, with Sage. I mean, every now and then she pops up in the site in the news cycle, saying something she says. She's like she stand by what she say, and she still keeps her job. So more power to her. Well, I would like for her. That's why I want her to come on my show because I would give her a fair interview, mm -hmm. you know, and I wouldn't immediately just jump on her. I honestly want to hear her side. All we have heard is her opinions on a little bit of things. I want to sit her down. I want to ask her how she grew up. I want to know what her her true thinking is without hearing it from the grapevine and, and without hearing little snippets. I hope she gives, even if it's not me, somebody that chance to have that interview. Okay. Well, I think you you I, I would love for her to be on your platform because you got some type of truth serum over there where you get make folks confess everything. But it do sound like she yeah. has issues with black men in particular. Or whatever well, they might come from a black father. I don't you know. Yeah, it does seem like that. It's a lot of it's a lot of black women who fool black who got a lot of problems with black men. <laughs> but it's a conversation that we need to have as a as a race or to ourselves to figure out what it comes from is just another set of generation trauma a word that i'm bringing up constantly oh yeah that's something to talk about definitely i'm glad y'all like my accent because i can't get rid of it i mean i spent over a decade up north and you know did it, and people love it wherever you go you know people love you for some reason so well, i guess some people laugh some people love it some people may not but you know what after you turn third you like screw it if you don't like it you don't like it the people who like it they roll with it baby this is me Whoa, 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 whoa. Obviously, uh, I guess we could we could bring on Dr. Short. He's been patient. I don't know if he's uh Dr. Bring, Short. Is. Bring him out, bring him out. Yeah. It's hard to rail when the barrel's in your mouth. Oh. I think Dr. Short went to give him some some dinner or something, but uh do I you've been holding patiently. But I definitely want to get Dr. Short in and take bring his take on something. I ain't scared of Dr. Short. I, Dr. Shaw, I don't think he uh I think he went to the restroom or something. Hopefully okay. he'll come back I on. I hope he ain't going to get no hydroxychloroquine. I, yeah, he can't do that on this show. I'm gonna cut him off. <laughs> he went to get some hydroxychloroquine. I really need to, show, even need to talk about it. Show, <laughs> 15 minutes later, I'm like, we are live in several countries. Yeah, we don't even need to talk about that. I, I think want... people forget that sometimes. But why he's not on here, I just wanna I got a special message I want to talk to folks about tonight. Okay. I want to tell folks about sacrificing because I thought about it. I, I made a lot of sacrifices in my life, and that's that's something um, that's something that people don't uh, talk about enough. When you want to get somewhere, and I'm still growing, baby, but I'm talking to somebody tonight real quick. Let's have a motivational moment. Um, sometimes you gotta like. Sometimes you gotta live where you where you don't see yourself living to sacrifice for where you want to be in life. Sometimes you have to uh, go on a job that you don't want to sacrifice. Sometimes you have to stay out in a relationship for a while until you can get what you're trying to get to sacrifice to where you want to go. Just you have to put yourself sometimes in a position for growth that's uncomfortable. And I just wanted to remember, it was on my heart to remind people about that. Uh, even sometimes I'm like, well, Lord, I'm just sick of having, I'm just sick. Of, I just want to be where I need to be. But let me tell you what I've learned so much, especially in this last year, is that God is the perfect planner. And um, I'm looking at God as my talent scout, like, you know, or well, not talent scout, but he's my partner in this business, you know. Um, and I got to trust him. I got to believe in him. So just know that work you're putting in, one day it's going to make all the difference. It's like a puzzle. You know, you may not be fitting those pieces together, but you may be putting a piece here, a piece there. And then when you look back, you're going to be like, oh, this whole right side don't got put together. Like, when did that happen? You know, a lot of times when people start new projects, I remember before I started my Care Dangerous talk. No, it was caredangerous.com. I used to do Celebrity Gossip website. And before I got started, I was asking one of the anchors at work. I was like, well, it's just when you start something, you just you just feel like it's nothing on the page and you got to start with something. And how do I grow this thing? And it's like. You just got to start day by day. 
don't let that blank page stop you okay envision that page being full and then the next page then the next page and then you got a chapter because a lot of times it's that start like me right now i'm overweight and you know what's been keeping me from working out is that blank page i just got to work out that one two three good times to get that in my system i gotta i gotta stop letting that that blank slate keep me from inactivity got to get over that hump and just get something started so my message to you tonight is remember that sometimes you got to sacrifice to get what you want okay sometimes you got to sacrifice to get what you want and that don't let the beginning okay don't let the beginning make you not feel like you're gonna reach the finish and the pleasure really comes from the journey because because in between that journey you're gonna see little nuggets happen for yourself little nuggets that ram in the bush that god talk about that he got waiting on you and those are the things that keep you going once you get started you see that oh like when i started my show and and i i had trouble you know some um a connection problems but i figured it out and i'm just thinking wow i was so distraught and frustrated because of those few technical difficulties i had and now i got it all i got it it's not even an issue for me anymore it's just it's just that's it that's it so i just wanted to i just wanted to give y'all that tonight and um yeah you know that's it run come back <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah that's right and we got somebody coming back especially i'm making a comeback brother right here wrote this book it's on amazon slavery's mastery it's don't like, call it a comeback yeah, don't, call it a comeback. don't call it a coon back or nothing like that right yeah. no, so no. book it's bigger than the phone book a lot of information. This is lifetime of scholarship and black excellence. Very great brother indeed. He's been very patient because we know he, we got to reap the whirlwind. Levy's about to bust again. He's about to bust these levees while open. I don't mind yeah. making that short <laughs> Hey, he gonna get his. He gonna get his in. He gonna be like Tyson Fury. It's like oh, Deontay Wilder. He'll get his in. He's starving <laughs> okay. now. He's gonna come on to the hunt. The right, the one and only, Dr. Randy Short. <laughs> oh, you know, hey, Doc, how you doing? Oh, I'm okay, and you? I'm good, man. It's good to see your face in the place. Dr. Short been busy, actually. Let me get him in. He's been uh, putting in work over the last several weeks, being on people's shows that I enjoy. So I caught the Darren Muhammad show this past hump day Wednesday. Mm -hmm. A lot of great information. Doing all right tonight, Doc? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Well, there's a lot to talk about. What you growing waves? <laughs> no, I'm not growing waves. Not not at all. I I don't want to get my hair cut, and okay. so um, and my hair is wild. I mean, I was thinking of just having it wild, and that would probably be offensive to your audience. No, you should have had it wild. Do like you told Roland Martin. I don't care if my hair's all over my head. I still look better than you. What is that? A twenty-four hour shadow you got on your face? Uh, so no uh, what do you mean here on my eye no i'm saying oh you mean his his he he needs to shave i don't know if he needs some magic shave or something he's <laughs> got enough money i mean you know i don't mind you seeing my hair it's i just put it padded down but um in fact what i really want to put on is my damn glasses well, why Dr. Short is rambling around? I want to say no, to no, your, I'm, your I'm audience like, yeah, I'm not who was that? Who was that? Lola Poppy? You say you was lost, and I, I made you. I lost you in thought. Is that a good or bad thing? Because I thought I was giving y'all some good jewels there. Right, you, you keep it coming. Let's talk. Shout out to Let's Talk. You're a good brother. Thank you, Let's Talk. I always appreciate the support. Yeah, he's good, bro. He got a great uh, YouTube channel as well. A lot of information. Talking among us, for us, and by us, be one. Appreciate the support. Hey, and uh, let me say who you're going to call Coon Busters to all the people <laughs> over in Facebook that are watching on my greatly reduced Facebook uh, channel that only has 738 people. I had 5,000 and then some, and they've been so mad at me. So, Oh, but you've grown that quick, though. Well, oh, yeah. not, not really. I haven't tried to bring everybody on. You know, every so many people are trying all these fake ass Africans trying to sell you 
a Bitcoin and steal from you or <laughs> people trying to sell sex. And I don't even know if the sex is any good. There's no way for you to try it out first to see if it is any good. You know, you know, isn't it interesting? You don't get an underwriter's, uh, you don't get a little you on a vagina. You have to like take a chance. It could be good or it could be bad. It could kill you. It may be the best you had and it still kill you. So I just don't add as many people as I once did in Facebook. And I'm trying to think. I have my, I must have taken them off. These are these glasses. These are my Clarence Thomas glasses. So <laughs> I'm going to take all your human rights away if I wear these. I want to wear the more cool glasses. I'm trying to think I, where, where I put them. I hope they didn't fall. Anyway, I'll find them. In fact, oh, you know what? I had them on. Give me just one second. Y'all talk right. for just one second. I'll be right back. Right back. Right back. Right back. Well, Damn. I, well Lola or Layla, I'm glad I had you thinking, babe. I'm glad you. I'm glad you liked what I was dishing out. All right, ask you about the robot dogs that people are talking about on social media. These robot dogs they got out here. Some people say they already been weaponized. They got guns on the robot dogs allegedly. My brother familiar? right over here was talking about that the other day. He was he was like startled. He was like, "They got robot dogs." I'm like, "Yeah, they coming to shoot you. You a black man. You gonna be his first target." Like the movies, like you look at our robot, you know, uh, Terminator. All the movies are becoming real now. In real time, all the movies that prophesied about, even with the UFO thing. I mean, we're gonna have some visitors coming next, moving next door from outer space. It sounds like, and I do believe that they kidnapping black folks to build some type of slave colony on Mars or something. They got a lot of missing black people. Dick used to talk about that all the time. Dick Gregory missing black folks. So. Um, I just want to let everybody know I am shooting live on this. Uh, I'm I'm on Instagram live as well. You could join me on um YouTube on the We All Be um TV TV channel, and we're talking about a lot of stuff. I want to hear Dr. Short talk about Lizzo because she went straight butt naked with just oh, we, you know, we can't talk about Lizzo because they'll they'll ban us. If we talk. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, yeah, I think it's well, interesting. No, nah, I'm, I'm saying I'm just saying like it's weird where you can't critique people like it's a thought crime to even think about Lizzo. And I don't even really think about her. But I would say this about Lizzo. I think it's unfortunate that she allowed herself to become this type of joke instead right. of her talent. She's very talented. Like, she's very right. talented, but your talent is getting overshadowed by the other stuff, the circus of it all. May need another I extension. I'm trying to hook up my laptop before it goes out in 22 minutes. I understand. It's Mercury Retrograde. This is last weekend of Mercury Retrograde, the last Mercury Retrograde of the year. Okay, here we go. That's my main light, so I need that one. Okay. Okay. All right. These are the. What's up, Matt? Thank you for checking out. Please join us on YouTube. Hey, how is everybody? Now, you made a comment about there being a slave yeah. colony. Yeah. Okay, we already got it. It's called America and Brazil and South Africa mm. and, and Gaza mm -hmm. and Libya. We have lots of slave colonies, and forgive me, uh, you know, the lights from these uh, computers laptop is good, though. and laptops jack my eyes up. And I did uh, jack everybody's eyes up. Well, no, but if you get these cheap glasses I have that have blue light mm -hmm. protection, yeah, it keeps you from having eye strain, migraines. Mm. And, uh, so my vision is great, uh, but... Um, but uh, my eyes don't like the blue light. So I have all these computers and such. My eyes will be jacked up. So pardon me for that interruption. No, you fine. Like, you good. You good. good. But I got to talk, Dr. Shaw. I got to ask you about, because you know the Chappelle family. You you friends with Dave's mom. That's a, your mentor. Yeah, I, Jacob. I, I know his mom. I know his brother. I know his sister. I know some of the nieces and nephews. I know some cousins. I've met him off and on over the last, say, 35 better part of almost 40 years but i mm -hmm. do not know him well at all but you think i mean when you think about his stances and recent comedy specials you think he's legitimate um he's a legitimate personality he's a legitimate talent he's a legitimate comedian um 
I have to say too, the, the show made a lot of points that I agreed with, but it wasn't funny. Uh, so I didn't laugh much. And I think we've said worse things on your shows. <laughs> than, than you said them, doctor. You said worse. And, and, on whose show? <laughs> on his show or my show? Your yeah. show too. I've done funnier shows. And my <laughs> thing is, so I think maybe he needed to get something off of his chest, more power to him. A mm. lot of people need to get some stuff off their chest. It's ridiculous what's going on with us as a community if you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. and uh if you ask me uh it's uh dave has said this kind of stuff before so this isn't new this isn't new for mr chappelle to make commentary and by the way uh mr chappelle's commentary wasn't really anti-gay as much as it was anti the excesses of the trans community the trans community pushes the envelope too far. You know, I would tell anybody that you don't want to see folks messed over, mistreated, all of that. But now, right here where I am, outside of Washington in Loudoun County, the superintendent of schools is trying so hard to appease trans students until a boy can put on a dress and repeatedly rape girls and they cover everything up and threaten the families. I mean, pardon me, if the fuck that uh and and the parents if the parent goes in to ask they make him a terrorist because he's upset about his daughter being raped mm. that must be a punk ass white man because the average white dude would have shot up a whole bunch of folks at starbucks or something else on just the general principle so what did dave Chappelle really say other than gay and black aren't interchangeable I mean, so in reality, and and people should be quick, don't make him a hero or figure. He's a man, he wants to have his own life, who happens to be in the comedy business. Bob Hope never had to stand up for anything. None of the white comedians have to stand for anything. Now, should people do it? On general principle, I would think yes mm -hmm. because the situation has died does he have to do it no uh he walked away from 50 million dollars i know black folks who would kill the next black person for 10. so oh, on yes. that basis there's some greatness if nothing other than he doesn't want to be bossed around yeah. isn't that what rosa parks did i don't know why do you folks push us around not that I would compare him to Rosa Parks, but I'm making a point. He doesn't want to be pushed around. The man has been in the business. Of, he's 48. He's been in the business at least 30 years. Mm -hmm. Can't you at a certain point demand respect or, or have your opinion heard in as much as people pay to hear what you have to say and whatever ratchet way you decide to deliver it? I didn't find the show funny. I found the show to be on point on a range of issues. Dave Chappelle didn't denounce the gay community and Dave Chappelle is an ally to the gay community. Uh, that's, that's no secret. So to cast him as a homophobe is a lie. If you heard the same show I heard and you have a man talking about he wouldn't mind going to a glory hole and how he's a star, stonewall gay. Dave Chappelle almost said, look, I'm with gay folk. The only mm -hmm. people that didn't hear that are the trans people who are hated by the gay community. So Dave Chappelle, as far as within the gay universe, he didn't really do anything other than say, Dan, the trans are out of order. Well, did you see? Did you see the video I posted on my Instagram, Doctor Short, of uh, the comedian Flame Monroe? Um, is she a friend of his, or is that the the white dude that's against him? No, this is the trans comic who was on Dunn Lemon on CNN, and he he always makes it clear that he has three dogs in the fight. He's he's transgender, and he's a comic. But he said first he's black. He said because Flame Monroe said because he can hide that. Well, he was trying to say, you know, he can put away being trans. He can put away um, 
being a comic, but he can't put away being black. And what do I say on my show all the time is that the LGBTQ being gay isn't the problem. The problem is is when people are putting so many other things above their race because that's got to be the number one because when you break down some of these groups, they're not even looking out for your people as a whole. Well, There's discrimination and racism inside the LGBTQ. So for any black gay person to think that that group is is supportive of you or for you, that is a lie. Um, but we look it, at, but you know what? What angers me is that LGBTQ is a white male supremacist movement with white supremacist gay women in tow, and with blacks basically, they're basically homoerotic sharecroppers. Mm. They don't get any of the real benefits. They don't get the uh, rainbow or homo dollars that are invested each uh, June. So uh, black folks who are gays are the biggest chunks, the biggest dupes. The, I call them sexuality coons because those white gays or white sodomites, whatever, they white first. You don't even have to. You can assume that wherever they move and step, black folks are kicked out. San Francisco manhattan boston they don't like us uh they never have they've always been against us and the thing that pissed me about dave is if you're going to mention stonewall tell the damn history that the black panthers fought the police not the gays mm -hmm. and black people rescue the gays from the police and the gays turned around and supported uh gentrification and removal of black people well, that's the story they don't want you to hear, Dr. Shore. Well, no, the, but the point is, is that there are people who are refusing to tell it the same way Mark Lamont Hill won't tell, the same way Rollover Martin won't tell. Uh, there are plenty of people the same way Fraud Reed and all the other ones. So this guy um, from ESPN, the Caribbean dude who hates black people's guts. And forgive me, black men are such castrated wimp bitches who want to live their lives vicariously through the pro sports stars instead of freeing their people. So, you know, we have to walk on eggshells around black men living out their fantasies through the sports instead of in the real world. Well, getting this some is power, a... getting yeah, some real power, getting some real respect. If that had been a white player that didn't want to be vaccinated, there would have been a huge contingent of anti-vax white people behind that guy. Look at how this dude is basically Kyrie, whatever his name is. Kyrie. It's also Kyrie. I mean, because it's, <laughs> it's Roosevelt, Roosevelt. Okay, it, I got it, No, no, that, that that can be pronounced Kyrie. That's the song Kyrie and Lay is on. It's a it's a, a classical song. Okay. It's singing in Howard University's choir. That's so right. I like when Negroes get these spellings and then demand to be it be pronounced like their mama did. And if someone knows how it's said somewhere else, they've got to conform. I don't know his mother. So if I say Kyrie, know who I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Well, Dr. Shaw, I just want to say, though, I think a lot of this goes back to black people wanting white acceptance because we've constantly been duped and bamboozled. Like, I'm glad you brought up the point you did because, like I brought up the feminist movement earlier, Black women were duped, and now, you know, we have the LGBTQ duping black gay people into thinking that like, look, they like, are part of that I'm group. To be honest, I don't think people are duped. I you think don't. that people get sexual access in these movements. They got sexual access to whites in the communist movement and the peace movement and the anti-war movement. Every time there's an opportunity to be laid up with another group of people, black folks who hate themselves or basically want you know a different variety of sex you know basically they treat these movements like a golden corral of promiscuity and i'm tired of black booty i want a flatter pinker tighter booty or a browner one or one that speaks a different language or one that has an ideology that goes against the church i grew up in uh black people have a self-hatred problem that's that's disgusting it's gross and it is dominant it's everywhere, and that's the biggest problem we have is that we hate ourselves and everybody else agrees. They hate us too. And we love white folks to our detriment. Well, you know, I don't think hate loving white people 
you can love white folk and tell their asses off. Paul, I say it to our Paul, detriment, Paul, though. Well, no, what I'm trying to say is it isn't love if it's to your detriment. That is, uh, what's the term? Um, sadism is one. What's the other one? Uh, I want to say misogyny or misogyny. It's not that. Forgive me. There's a more compli complicated term for person that likes pain. A masochist or something like masochistic. that? Masochistic. Yeah. Black yeah. people have a masochistic Stockholm Syndrome obsession with white people. Mm -hmm. And that's our fault at this yeah. point. I, yeah. You know, so look, I don't hate white people. And I would tell anybody, I happen to like my ancestors. I've met some of my white relatives with the exception of one who's down in Florida who's passing. If you see this, fuck you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. My other white relatives have been quite cool. Do I hang out with them all the time? No. But were they nice, polite, friendly than some of the black relatives you've known all your life who you can't get them to call back except for when they want some money? So I hated well, people. Can I if, ask you a question, Dr. Short? Have you ever had a white friend who didn't let you know at some point that they were white? Now, I want you to think about what I said. Either one of you. Have you ever had a white friend oh, yeah. Yeah. who didn't let you know in some way that they were white? Um, I don't keep a lot of, of friends that don't. I'd say I grew up with like it, the segregating school. I'm not turned on by people who have lighter skin color, whatever. I, I'll be friendly to almost anyone. Um, most white people have a sense of entitlement. I have a white associate and they pissed me off they, and I hung the fuck up on them. And, and if I don't toss them again for 10, 20, I, I'm not mad at them. I'm just not going to put up with it. These aren't friends. These are acquaintances. And people need to know the difference between the two. In fact, most Black people you deal with aren't your friends. They're acquaintances. And so I don't think people really know. In fact, Black people have um, sometimes outrageous expectations of Blacks. And they have... Um, bargain basement expectations just a white person doesn't spit on me they don't hate me they love me right a black yeah. person does everything and it's never enough <laughs> just really so basically we have everything out of order i'm not saying all of us but way too many and so um i'm when we're expecting basketball players pornographic uh hedonistic rappers uh I call it Dicky Minaj, and um, and then you've got a comic. There's an, an interview, I believe it's Malcolm X at uh, University of California at Berkeley, right. who was trashing either Newsweek or Time talking about black leaders, and they were talking about Louis Armstrong, Lena Horne, and this it's 57 years or 58 years later, mm -hmm. and we're allowing entertainers, people that make you feel good, their job isn't supposed to raise issues. Right. In the words of the white broad, Ingraham, who I could care uh, less for, just dribble. The Harlem Globetrotters have just dribbled all this time. I don't know if any strong political statement that the black Harlem Globetrotters have made. I don't know of any strong political statements that the black classic football games or any of this have ever generated, ever. Uh, or HBCUs necessarily make a, a, a political statement. And now all of a sudden, we outsource that responsibility to individuals that a lot of us are jealous as hell of because we never made it or I injured my knee or... I, I lost the testicle high, you know, doing the high jump and I didn't get into the sports. So I'd like to see like that movie, um, I'm going to get you sucker. No, Hollywood Shuffle. Oh, Remember yeah, the black dude kept hounding Robert Townsend's character. Why are you going to play that role? You can't do that. And in reality, there are a million niggas that are willing to be vaccinated to be in that dude's slot. 
they'd vaccinate their mama, their, their, their pit bull, and everything else to be on television and play basketball. And they want to see, in their view, if he's dumb enough to leave it all and make all those white folks mad because they'd be saying, man, that nigga dumb. He was making 30 million fucking dollars a year and he's going to stand up and tell the white folk he can't take a shot that the president's had three of. Man, that nigga's full of shit. I mean, all the other people, Will Chamberlain would have took the shot, right? The majority of Uncle Ruckus Negroes in our community consider Kyrie a fool if he leaves. And, and and yet some of them don't want the shot. But, man, he could take care of the $30 million. I mean, even if his penis would look, man, he could stock up on Viagra. He could get some for Chairman Mao in China, man. Man, nigga, play the game, right? Our people, for the most part, mm-hmm. don't care about facts, reality, or sacrifice. In reality, we're imitation white folks. We just want everything to work. Our big problem is... We don't want to sacrifice. We don't want to struggle. And we sort of think like we're going to grandfather our way into the American dream Mm. and kind of sidestep. Well, you know what? I think after all these years, uh, white people and us should love each other. I can't believe this is 2021 and a white hole going to charge me more money than the white man. Right. I meet these sick black people. If COVID gets rid of all of them, we'll be blessed. Mm. Because you know you can't get anywhere. Doctor, so, let me ask you this: Why do? Because I've been asked this question. White people are normally up in arms about losing rights. I mean, you've seen them at the Capitol, storm the Capitol, and barely anything happened to them. They didn't get beat. Why aren't white people out here making a, a, a just a, a a a big protest about? Uh, being forced to take the vaccination. I would have... Okay, hold, 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 let's deal with it. One, I was at the Capitol. Everybody didn't storm the Capitol. There are a variety of people, both infiltrators that made that happen. I think they are about to or close to arresting one of the Capitol Hill police. I think, Brother Ryan, when I was putting up the video and I was talking about the thin screw line, Mm-hmm. On it's like, God, there's so few officers. Mm-hmm. I'll tell anybody about five officers jumping me over body oil. So you? Like, yeah, I mean, I almost thought I was gonna get beat up because I had body oil in one of my bags, and then you know, and it was th- because look, the Capitol Hill police, it's full of coons and sellouts. They've got five class action suits. My dad used to be chaplain for the Capitol Hill police. Mm-hmm. In fact, uh it's just here is that which one no 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 no. i don't have this capitol hill police stuff here but the capitol hill police are totally racist they get people from delaware and southern maryland and jersey and new york people who really hate black people's guts and put them there and they run the black people including the congressional black caucus people and their staffs through hell and no one talks about it that's because it's it no one wants to i mean it's, it would be internationally embarrassing to the United States that someone like Clyburn or, for that matter, um, Donald Payne and others would be harassed over their ID in the congressional parking lot by Capitol Hill police that says America hasn't moved anywhere in 50, 60 years. So there are a whole lot of, forgive me, successful black people who lie and keep their mouths shut and don't acknowledge this because in fact they get rewarded like the little negro with the atlanta braves that was told about the blood clots oh so you gotta you mean the atlanta hawks don't be i hate sports sports because it's a distraction from black people dealing with their issues (laughs) when we own the teams and when we get the money from it and it's doing something for us i'll feel differently but when the teams are supported whether it's the Atlanta Braves or the so-called Redskins or whatever, and they subsidize these teams by destroying black neighborhoods and putting up stadiums that black taxpayers pay for, and yet there's no school supplies or food or air conditioning. Fuck all that. I can't stand niggas obsessed with sports. I knew you it's was about bullshit. to go there. It's bullshit. And it's not the sports itself. 
It's I'm not upset, so I'm fine. I know yeah. Negroes crying over Kyrie's job, but what about the thousands of teachers and nurses and others who don't want to be vaccinated, who are losing their jobs, and niggas don't notice that, and yet they may know the teachers, they may know the firemen, they may know the first responders, and that doesn't matter because they don't have the big butts, and white people don't, you know, have them slobbering, you know, niggas slobbering, I love my coach. And this little ugly racist white dude with the plaid jacket and shit that somebody shitted on on the golf course and he's never washed it. And they're holding him the highest. But I'm so sick of them doing this. And forgive me, dumbass black men who know every statistic on their favorite athletes and they've never read their own fucking children's uh, report cards in decades. Mm. It's despicable. I hate it. Paul Robeson. And none of these other people, Harry Davis, whatever the nigga was that was helping the people out in California get the black athletes, never wanted us to be as stupid as we are about sports right now. So it's not running track. It's not playing basketball. It's none of that that I have an issue with. I have an issue with just people being obsessed with it to the point where I know what it's like. You'd have speakers come to a school and the young people didn't want to hear anything about history. Someone like Ron who's done all this history and travel, they would never want to come to school. But you could get any athlete who's fucked more white women than Elvis Presley, who snorted more dope than Ecuador has cocaine. And because they play sports and they make money like a black racehorse, a gladiator for white power, they are profound and intelligent and worthwhile. And these people have never heard of Malcolm X, don't want to know, well, he got shot. But if if Kobe dies in a plane crash, which was a tragedy, mm-hmm. people know about that and they're so connected to it. And so it is part of how they enslave us to create. It's interesting. Man, I'm so glad what Ron Hurd did for the game. He's been so great for the game. But you can't get any jobs in the front or back office mm-hmm. for the sports teams. Um Black quarterbacks, they still have problems with this basic stuff. Right. Like this bastard that they just fired, who's a racist, nasty, vicious white supremacist. And, uh, you know, and, and everybody's crying over him. And I'm thinking, damn, it's just one cracker who's a multi, multi millionaire. He'll get another job. People who hate blacks will hire him. Believe me, there's a racist billionaire that will give that guy a job to hurt black athletes. Mm-hmm. Don't worry and you have negroes crying over him like he's dr king well dr short thank you so much we love always to hear from you is it okay if we can move on to another yeah, topic? you can move you can uh, but you talk about like dr harry edwards is the black guy harry you edwards, as long as i Edward. answered your question i want to make certain i answer that because did it did i answer it i want to make certain i think I you you put a lot out there. I know you talk about John Gruden. That's the guy you're talking about, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, screw him. That's his name. It almost sounds like that. Sister, all I'm saying to you is this. We do have this obsession. We want white people to love us. We don't like ourselves. And, you yeah, know, that's like, what I, know, I was I saying. I think there'll be people tripping off my hair, not being perfectly quaffed and shit. Like, they're paying me big bucks. And I, that's why I said, you know, wear my hair the fuck I want. What, you going to pay me to go to the barbershop and get a blow job while I'm in the chair? Because I get bored in the barbershop. They don't have nothing to say anyway when I'm in there. Oh, so, Lord. Yeah, they love to talk about sports in the barbershop. Let, let's move on. Let, <laughs> let, me, let, me say, let, let me say this, Dr. Short, because I texted you this on purpose twice. You didn't respond back. So you must tell me your opinion tonight. We know your relationship with Lizzo. You can't stand her. You will not get out of this question tonight. How did you feel about Lizzo's outfit from the other night? I don't know where she was going. You've seen it. She had two little stickers over her uh, areolas, her nipples, and she was basically wearing a see-through net like a fish. Um, and people were saying, hey, your body shaming again. Your body shaming. It was some people in the comments saying, look, she'll post this video, then she'll cry tomorrow. So what she did recently was she went on her Instagram Live. She, she pulled up her dress in the back and showed her butt like you love and she twerked and she said y'all can kiss my black and 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 dr short Lizzo. Um, uh, this will look like 
a morbidly obese Christmas tree with too much <laughs> trimmings on it. Look at Ron. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I mean, Lizzo, she's a disgrace. And, and, and the thing that got me was that she had square titties. The only other oh. person that was square titties is Queen Latifah. I don't know if it's, if you, you know, Remember when she was a Betsy Smith and she was in the mirror and I was like, <laughs> yeah. she put like Lego blocks of I don't know it was real though. Not sure what you think that was real. I I, I, was, I, mean, I, know, I was just thinking it almost looked like a man's chest with big instead of a woman's breast. I mean now sister. Yeah, I, I remember, remember that saying I was questioning. But I'm telling you, you know, you got jugs from heaven. I mean, Hawaiian punch <laughs> would sell if they put it in something shaped like what you got. I mean, the wet bar that God blessed you with, thank him for it. Lizzo should have what you have. I mean, it's like, you know, it, it's sort of like one of those lava lamps that's inverted that hangs out. And it's like they're looking at you, you know, like a closed circuit camera. If you have that, some video of me, I want it back. Anyway, <laughs> Lizzo, I mean, square titties, flat behind. And my God, she had those, those uh, what are those love handles? Looked like you could have hid a smoked chicken up in there. I wouldn't have come out looking like that. I mean, and fat isn't pretty, and we should. In fact, someone said she's a model, and I said she is for CPR awareness. Well, Dr. Show, I, this is a point I want to bring up. But real quick, let me say to the sage, my YouTube channel is Care Dangerous Talk. Care Dangerous, you will find it. But I want to, I want to bring this up to you because this bothered me. So I was trying to find the name of the guy from the R&B group, which I'm pretty sure you probably don't know. It's a group. It was a group called Pretty Ricky. Now, mm -hmm. one of their members who I think he's getting ready to go to prison for something. I think it was something oh. like fraud or something I like that. I to feel you with that name. Yeah. So Pretty Ricky, <laughs> the one of the members tried to take up for Lizzo. And a lot of the black um, rappers and stuff lately, like Offset, took up, took up for recently. But I saw in the comments, people were like, oh, finally, black men sticking up for black women. Oh, I love this. And I'm thinking to myself, out of all the black women that need protecting, you want to stand up and protect Lizzo? Well, we're doing from, it for from, Floyd. From doing something that she knows that she's been a puppet about. I mean, she's in her 20s. So sometimes when you're talking, I she's feel like you were harsh with the short. But then I'm like, no. You know, because I was looking at her as a young woman who could change, but when she makes these videos and she's shaking her butt and she's unapologetic, and then she cries the next day like she has some mental health issues. She but does. These, but this, this is the type of black woman that the black men want to protect. I'm like, no, they got it all. Well, right. it's What's the that? same way that sisters march for Floyd George. I mean, we we can't go a week without a ne'er do well junkie criminal somebody who gets into a, an unfortunate situation that I think Floyd George should be killed? No. But is Floyd George, the four little girls in Birmingham? No. He no. was a, a, a potential pedophile, porn star, abuser of women, all this other kind of stuff. He was a junkie for most of his life. And damn, the wages of sin is death. Okay, I'm a Christian. You keep messing around, things happen to you. So we as a community, I, I want to say this. There are a whole lot of black people in our community that are trashy losers. And they can only identify with trashy bottom feeder losers. Mm -hmm. Anybody black that doesn't dress like Lizzo, take Diana Ross. Hate the hell out of her. Now everybody fucks white men in Hollywood. But Diana Ross got some white dick. Oh, you just can't. I mean, 50 years later, they said, you know, ain't no white dude fine enough. No, Diana, you couldn't get no white dick. You should have stayed with Barry Gordy, who was screwing Chris Clark and other people. You get what I'm saying? But we, we're we sick. We like trash. When I put out my little letter to talk about, um, what's his name? Uh, Quaylude. Yeah, Tommy Tommy Quaylude. Quaylude. <laughs> and we were talking about the picture to put, to put out our story. Uh, uh, I said, Latoya, you know our people need trash. If you put just a regular picture up, they won't read it. But if I put up a bunch of whole ass looking women, then we'll get their attention. Make a movie like Rosewood, black people won't watch it. Make Soul Plane, make Coming to America Part Two, make Garbage and Trash, or have a church, a stupid nigger preacher. His church is always packed. 
get a person like Holman, United Methodist, that there in your Memphis, am I correct? Wherever that dude with the little afro, this that switch headed preacher that was with Dr. King, you know, well, Bill the Cows, you talking about? Uh, no, not the not the guy with cows. He's the minister that worked with the uh, with the AFSCME Trashmen's uh, strike. Oh, you talking about James Lawson? Yes, Lawson. The one who brought King. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and Lawson, his little punk ass. I, you I, like I, James Lawson? <laughs> um, James Lawson and I had an argument because James Lawson basically said he questioned his own gender when he held his own son. You really? mean you getting a hard on holding your son? <laughs> he said that Dave Lawson. He I said out of L.A. He, now. He's he, about ninety some years no, old. I, just, I I have dealt with these niggas. I was amazed. He's a hundred percent pro LGBTQ. All this stuff is great and wonderful. And I'm thinking, no, no, all of it isn't. They're problems. We have an epidemic of people dying from AIDS right now, and the spike protein that's in Corona. It's also an HIV because they cut this experimental thing with HIV. A lot of people are going to end up who never did anything will have AIDS from getting these shots. So no, I'm going to make a disclaimer. I'm not, we, we promote not freedom of speech on here, but we don't, sure. I'm not endorsing whatever the point of view is. <laughs> Right, right. I don't want them to take you off. I'm only talking about the spike protein being cut with HIV. And, I saw a um, video on my YouTube that talks about exactly what Dr. Short is speaking about. I, I, I'm not. Yeah, but they target it. They target certain people. Yeah, they, they, well, they I understand. Me. That's okay. Um, so, well, let me ask. Well, 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 before we go back into the vaccination, this is the topic I must. I didn't bring want to talk about vaccination. No, we don't want to talk about the vaccination. Well, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I, 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 in passing, I just dealt with. There are all kinds of issues that we could get upset about that are really important, but black people, because they've been misled, miseducated, and betrayed by the boule and the elite Negroes, whether they're in church or any place else, professional associations, have left black people for dead for the last 70 years. Mm. Look, Dr. Show, if people just listen to me, you and Ron, I, what I say on almost every show is people that look just like you and I who are not us discernment but i i gotta ask you this dr short because you were supposed to come on with me to talk about this and i know ron is interested in, in this topic well you didn't have me back i mean I well i had to take a break i, I just okay. my yes, don't put on me. black oh. women like blaming black men for stuff yes, <laughs> absolutely do you hear this you hear this nigga I, I no i'm telling the truth you i gonna mean do me like that dr. Short? no you brought run, it up run uh -huh. run who who idea was it to bring dr randy short on tonight well, Kara said, hey, we should have the doctor in. I thought about it. I said, I'll give it a go. Because I didn't have them the other day. <laughs> <laughs> so I oh, I didn't know the whole story because Dr. I actually was thinking about you because I've been like, you the see this? But Dr. Short brought us together, though. Dr. Short brought us together, so that's a good thing. Uh, I don't yeah. want that bird replaced he made an introduction. In, my, in my post. It's, 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 it's real simple. We're, we're shallow. And um, <laughs> we that has to change. And okay, if, can I... Can, can I ask you this question though? Can no. I, okay, because if I don't stop y'all, we'll keep running. What is the set the? Oh, I can't say the word right now. What is the the what's the, when you when you when you love something so much? We we are assessed with Italians, black people, and gangster stories. We know yeah. that uh, that BMF series that Fifty Cent just dropped. He has the Power series. We we just uh, love gangster stories, but we what is that about our exception? What was that? Can't see it. Uh, it's called Operation Gladio. People need to understand that the Central Intelligence Agency and others uh, helped bring drugs and uh, ruin. Uh, black gangs used to protect black communities. They used to operate policy, create jobs, and they brought the narcotics into our neighborhood. And so the very people that are celebrating all this are weaponized mm -hmm. uh, traitors. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, they they do all of this uh, trash, and it's to bring us down. And and I can just tell you, in in fact, this book was discarded. I'm so glad it's a four hundred dollar book, depending on who says it. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Um, chapter two: The Lucky mm -hmm. Break, Negroes and Narcotics. And so the CIA's black budget, when they didn't get enough money from the government to kill and torture and overrun governments, they
they began using black celebrities, artists, and, and others to sell dope, in particular, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, New York, and Philadelphia, and then Los Angeles, Chicago. So this is a government program that's happening. This is why, you know, um, right after we criticized uh, Quelu, Natural Hair Magazine got hacked. I mm-hmm. got kicked off of Instagram. I mean, dude, you've got like tens of thousands of people. You're worried about one letter, although 45,000 people have read it, and I stand by it. And Quaalude, if you're friends to Africa Bambatha, and you think it's wrong for a man who's raped girls and boys mm-hmm. for decades to lose a position, how are you living, uh, Talib Quayley? You have to. Your actions show that you have affinity for a person who's a serial rapist, a serial pedophile of girls and boys. Mm-hmm. If you, the Bible says, how can two walk unless they agree? So in principle, Talib Quayle supports pedophilia. Mm-hmm. Maybe he doesn't do it himself, but he doesn't have a problem if he knows someone that does it. And all the other people that came to defend Africa Mambada. Uh, that's how trash yard neighborhood is. Folks are talking all this trash about R. Kelly. He's he's he he's the tip of the iceberg compared to Africa Bambatha. Talking about Bill Cosby. I mean, you think P. Diddy does less? Well, you know, R. Kelly said that he was gonna start naming names and uh, I was a couple of talk shows and they were I'm against stop that. buying his records as He's had a 500% increase in his record sales. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch sky. I'll go out and buy. I've only bought the power of the P-U-S-S wire. The best of both worlds. That was, I liked the album, unfortunately. (laughs) (laughs) I really like that. I I think that's the last rap thing and I bought it digitally. The power of the P-U-S-S-Y. That's why niggas get their hair cut and try to look fly. Okay, that's that's probably the only rap song you've ever heard me say I like. I love that song. You know, I mean, R. Kelly did a great job on that. That's my favorite thing. And, um, you know, I so I'm not a big R. Kelly fan, but um, no one's treating Mr. Weinstein like they're treating R. Kelly. Right. We have 65,000 or more missing black women in this country. I don't hear anyone talking about it. Okay. Uh, Hollywood, the your local port authority, your bus station, we have hundreds of thousands of enslaved women and girls in this country. And you want me to obsess on R. Kelly? At least they were eating. At least they had some place to stay. Uh, um, I don't think he's, I, mean, I don't like how, if any of this stuff is true. Mm. I don't like it. I don't want anybody to give herpes to anybody if that happened. But relatively speaking, what about the guys, uh, men, three men or something? You know, the little stupid white dudes that's a father and son. They all have some sort of STD that have given herpes and AIDS to everybody. And no one's destroyed or put them in jail. Oh, you have know, a Charlie Sheen. Sheen. Yeah. Sheen. I can't remember them. Afro Sheen. That didn't throw it off. Okay. <laughs> His brother's a million they Esteban. Called, they should be called Cracker Sheen. <laughs> nobody, nobody deals with the fact that that happens throughout Hollywood, that people get all these diseases and so forth. They want to make it, whenever they want to trash a particular issue in society, they find a black man. They want sexual harassment. They have Clarence Thomas. You want domestic violence, you got O.J. Simpson, right? Mm -hmm. If you want a a domestic terrorist, you get uh, John Muhammad. They always make the black man the image of it on one hand. And when there's a savior, as long as they castrate black men, then you get the little sumo wrestler brought with the Jerry Curl, um, Stacey Abrams. Or you get some uh, buffoon-ass, man-hating black broad, like this thing we have in D.C., who, by the way, we now have those robot dogs chasing niggas right in D.C. They are they are deployed as I speak. Okay, wow. and why I, somebody I, I, just brought up? You remember Charlie Sheen? They didn't make him the face of anything. He no, just they, did don't, they never make they did they didn't make Rock Hudson the face of AIDS. They made Magic Johnson the face of AIDS. Right. They always do this. 
And when they get through, if they do overturn or have any questions about the election, they're going to make that black woman down in Atlanta, La Ruby and her stupid ass daughter, they'll be the face of the electoral fraud, not the people that own these systems. So uh, to me, uh, R. Kelly uh, is a victim of sexual trauma and abuse. Abuse yes. have been abused. Nobody has suggested teaching him how to read and helping him to work through the demons of being molested by females or a female. And he's not the only one. Ike Turner's molested by women. Uh, I think Chris Brown's molested by women. There are a whole bunch of these people uh, molested by women. Males who are predators, I don't like what they do. No one offers counseling, care, or compassion. It's offered to serial murderers that are LGBTQ or trans, but oh, R. Kelly can't get no help. Clearly, a person as gifted as he has something that's salvageable and redeemable. And to me, the same way they should round up everybody connected to Weinstein, they should lock up the parents that took their babies over to be around R. Kelly. The same way they should have locked up that Hispanic broad that was hoping Michael Jackson would moonwalk through her boy's ass. That's outrageous. Well, see, I was told different things. I was told that people that have that uh, sexual issue with dating, I mean, or uh, messing with younger children or messing with teenagers, I was told that that couldn't be fixed or no rehabilitation could be oh, had. I didn't say that you could, you could stop him from being a pedophile. But first and foremost, when they say that I don't buy it, for two reasons. Uh, I believe in God. There's nothing too great for God. When you say you can't fix it, it means we have to accept it. That's the strategy of the pedophile movement. They, mm -hmm. they want two things. I, my brain makes me want to screw kids. Right. There's a, there's a significant number of us in the population. And so because we just want to love kids, you want to jail us and persecute us like we're, we're black. This is what's happening right now. And by the way, all the billionaires that support Black Lives Matter and everything else, they support lowering the age of consent. So to me, it's interesting. You want to lock R. Kelly up because he's banged people of just below the age of consent. And yet you have a movement to legalize it with billions of dollars and corporations behind. So wait a minute. It's wrong if R. Kelly hits some baby booty. But if George Washington, which he most certainly did, busted baby booty, he's the father of the nation. The smartest, most intellectual American who busted baby booty was Thomas Jefferson. And all yeah. the rest of them. So we've got, I mean, Hugh Hefner most certainly screwed someone under age. Elvis? Uh, Elvis screwed under age. Well, uh, Jerry Lewis water. screwed people under age. In fact, I would say this now, stop. There are a lot of states in the country where people can screw at 15 and 16. Mm -hmm. So to me, you know, you could do it in Alabama, but if you bust the nut and if you're on a bus and it's parked across the line, if you bust the nut in them in Florida, you get into trouble. But if you hit them on the side of the bus in Alabama, you, you know, you're in like Flynn. This is insane. We need a federal law on pedophilia that that's covers it. And we need everything that we don't care this thing goes to court by the age of 16. And I'm just saying this to you as, a, as an educator. Uh, ask some black men that are taught in school being harassed by girls uh, 14 and 15 years old. They're trying to screw the teachers and the teacher can beg. In fact, a lot of folk get fired because they don't want the people. That doesn't make it right. A lot of white women are screwing these children. I'm seeing it. Uh, uh, yes. and, and they're not being punished. They're being, they're being understood. So what I'm saying to you, for R. Kelly, um, he can be helped. There is a thing called God. He may not want it, but uh, people can, too, make changes. The same way people can stop uh, going to glory holes. Well, people what's the, what's the rules with it? Because I know it, uh, all of us has at least one person we can say in our family back in the day. We've heard the stories where they married somebody super young, but it was normal then. So is it's it just normal. It's normal throughout the country, depending on the state. We have hundreds of thousands of people 
who get married at 15 and 16 in this country. But and what I'm saying, whole, though, it was, whole, it was accepted they, 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 in our grandparents. Our grandparents, when they grew up, they it's married called, young. It's called capitalism. Okay. In order to get people to work in factories for production, since they're not on the farm, then you've got to delay getting your screw on, which that this whole capitalism thing has nothing to do. I mean, you could bust the nut when you're 12. You mean I gotta wait until I'm 22? I mean, that doesn't make that seems like forever when you're that age. People, we need to understand that it was the norm across this country for white mm -hmm. men to have sex with 12 and 13 year old black girls to reproduce babies. That was the norm. I mean, they act like these 10 year old pregnant people. If they don't think these white folks in the plantation weren't screwing boys and girls at whatever age they felt like it. This country is based on it. I'm not saying it's right, but all of a sudden you just love George Washington. You even have a big penis dedicated to him right in the center of the city that everybody could see. Name for George Washington, who used to screw black uh, black underage girls to get theirs first. And you had white men that used to rape or rape black girls when they had syphilis or gonorrhea. They believe the black woman's vagina was so strong, it would take the disease out the white man. So there was a medical justification to rape black female children. It's mm. always been in their culture, but when you so, point so it my out- My point is, but now it's R. Kelly is the only one. Look, Metro Goldwyn Mayor, NGM, Mr. Mayor used to rape Judy Garland as a child. Yeah, she went through a lot. I mean, but she was raped by Mr. Mayor. They had to start getting screwed when she was 12. They don't talk about, and this is all Hollywood, it's Broadway, it's the music business. It's it's this sex trafficking. They are screwing children, and it's some of the most powerful people in the country. I just remind anybody that Washington, D.C. has the Capitol Paid School for Boys a school that I was in the process of applying to 39 years ago or 40 years ago, rough. And something told me, don't go. The year that I would have entered would have been the year it came out that our U S congressmen and senators were screwing the boys mm -hmm. U S congressional paid school. It's still going on. I, I happened to witness in 2005, the United States Speaker of the House having a romantic interlude with the boy no more than 11 to 12. What? And I was in the Speaker of the House's uh, I had to go in the room and scream and try to get myself together and like not say something, not get upset. Don't let, because I said, this man, he could kill me if I said anything. Damn. What I find fascinating about the show is when R. Kelly made this recent statement saying that he was gonna start naming names. It was, some, it was some he black. Should. It was it was some. It was a black show with black female celebrities, and one of them I know for sure said, "Well, he's a snitch. Why he got?" But I couldn't. I was like, "Why would she say women that?" Rape, women rape children too. There was just a report from France that the Catholic Church, between say 1950 and say 1990 or something raped 330,000 and a significant number of people were raped by nuns. See, what I don't like about black society, I hate it, is that we're able to see evil and bad in men, but we don't see it in women. There are a whole lot of women that rape children. There are a whole lot of women that get boyfriends and let the boyfriends rape their own children to maintain a relationship. The mothers either actively are involved or let it go the way. One of my best friends' mother used to let her her second husband rape her own daughter and look away and blame the girl for being raped. Real talk. And so I'm thinking, you mean you're only going to tell me that dad's the bad guy and mom who sat there and did nothing to protect the child? And so and so this country is full, full of no good, sorry ass, bad, batshit crazy black mothers that let this bullshit go on. They're women, and I know it is true, who allowed their boys to suck pushes penises, wouldn't feed their children so they would eat the semen out of uh, out of men, 
And then these babies have to get their tummies pumped. And we wonder where we get all these gay people in our community. This, it's not just the missing father. It's the fucked up mother and the fucked up grandmother. There's a family that just moved off my block. I heard the grandmother trying to convince the three-year-old boy he was gay. Mm. What do I do? Do I call child and family services? He'll get raped there too. If I say anything, I'm, I'm a snitch. I didn't mind my business. What We have a lot of this evil in our community that only God can deliver us from. And the niggas go to places where God isn't taught. Uh, now, the speaker of the house you were talking about, was that Dennis Hester or Hester from um Yes, Illinois? Dennis Hester. Hester, I, yeah. I told C.T. Vivian and a range of people that Hester was a pedophile in 2005. I said, it'll take 10 years. People think I'm crazy like I'm picking because he's a cracker. That's not me. I dog people because it's true, not because I dislike them. I can actually hate the shit out of someone I wouldn't lie on them. Because he was leading the charge in impeaching Bill Clinton back in the day. He was the one of the loudest people for impeachment. Yeah, but they're both two pedophiles. It's <laughs> like the difference between a distinction and a difference. They're both pedophiles. Dennis Hastert was a serial pedophile. I told people this. They told them, don't say my name because these folks could fuck me up. In fact, I used to have a nice thing doing butlering on Capitol Hill. I didn't want to go up there. I don't want to run and see some other pedophile shit. I mean, I... I had folks do stuff to family. I hate pedophilia. That shit upset me. I begged to get out of the contract. Just let me go. I won't come back. And I told people 10 years. So I was at his house, at his office on Cinco de Mayo, the 5th of May, 2005. Nancy Pelosi was there and Alberto Gonzalez, the no good attorney general. Mm -hmm. And Nancy Pelosi, I think she's a twisted freak too. And that's, I mean, I, I, I know it. I can feel you it. I, can't prove, I, can't prove, I know I know something's wrong with her. Let me tell you, she had such an evil spirit. I felt like I was getting ostrich shit sliding down the side of my face being next to her. I was so glad she left. She's evil. Dennis Hastert, that was the 5th of May, 2005. He got busted the 15th of May, 2015. Real talk. Not to show people that that's true. And he's like, not the only one. When 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 Congressman Foley got into trouble, mm -hmm. I called and I told people within 72 hours, this is back in 2005, when Congressman Foley stepped down, or 2005, 2006, whichever year it is, mm -hmm. I says, watch Hester step down within a few days, two, three days max from Congressman Foley from Florida stepping down from Congress. 72 hours later, Hastert stepped down because Foley was trying to fuck those kids in the Capitol Page School, and they still fuck them here. This is what goes on here. This, you hear me talk about D.C., this is a nasty-ass city. They got all the nice monuments and shit to their deviants, and the same old Babylonian screw the kitty type thing that happened back then, it happens right here with this Masonic bullshit. It's right here. I don't care. I don't care who doesn't like it. It's true. I was right about Dennis Hastert. I was right about Foley. And I'm trying to tell you. And it's just as sure as I was sitting there watching TV, waiting for them to show the story about how Papa Bush was screwing kids right there in the White House. Mm. They were taking kids in for Papa Bush, the one that they took. When they were going to show that thing on this scandal out from Boys Town, forgive me, I don't remember the name of the scandal, but I know what I'm talking about. The guy is Reverend King. He's a deviant black pedophile preacher out in Nebraska. Um, when that was supposed to come on TV in D.C., y'all talking about censorship? I was waiting for 2020 to come on, and the TV went black. And you never, the show never aired. It's never happened. That's because there's so many people here who screw kids, who rape kids, who are in the stuff. They even have basically slaves. They bring people over from Africa or other places and lock them up in their house. And I know I used to canvas and do stuff. On, and you go in and, and these little houses in Georgetown that have sub-basements, they had like four or five Africans living up in that motherfucker. You never see these asses out in the street. This is the kind of shit that happens here. There are tunnels here in D.C. that they used to bring black people through to sell them and other stuff. This place is evil. 
I ain't like I don't care who doesn't like it. And this goes on, and I'm just telling you, sometimes you get a feel of people. That guy, Adam Schiff, the congressman from California. It should be Adam shit, because that's what I think he likes smeared on him. There's something wrong with him. And there's something wrong with the little Chinese one, Lou. And Lou means the bathroom. That's probably where he finds people. You've got these people in Congress. Look at these people twice. They're freaks. They're deviants. They're pedophiles. They're rapists. They're liars. And this is why every time a freaky, dinky, nasty bill, they get all these people to sign up for it. It's the same way I think the chairman of the city council in this city was messing with boys because it was a white councilman right here. He's dead now. He had a dude. I don't know. They saw me somewhere. They had a motherfucker come to my house to recruit me to come to their damn parties. The guy's name is Ted Lotza. It's a real, this real shit. I ain't lied about nobody. Forgive me. I don't remember this pack of wood's name. It'll come to me. This city is full of this nasty, filthy stuff. Lots and lots. And it's like this in every major city. And it's the rich, nasty, freaky people pushing it. And the same way these folks have. Uh, they've got black folks like Stacey Abrams. You know why I think she has so much power? I think Stacey Abrams has procured children of boys to somebody. For people down in Georgia. And that's why they don't mess with her. You want to shut a political career down. Bust someone who's messed with the kid. They're finished. I'm talking about hit the road, Jack, with the disco beat. No, you know, Dave Chappelle joked in his last uh, special, the closure, that he was touched by a minister or a preacher. He joked about it. I don't know if it was real or not, but he put that I, in there. I, I, I believe it's possible because the family used to be in the Methodist church, and then there was a sudden shift over to Islam. Mm -hmm. Dave Chappelle was Muslim. Dave Chappelle's mom's Muslim. His sister's Muslim. His brother's Muslim. The family made a sudden shift uh when i heard about that i wondered is this the reason that people basically and i i believe the family is in the ame zion church okay you know there's a lot of uh, deviants in these black uh churches it's I mean, his great grandfather was a bishop and he was over at richard allen university in south carolina william chappelle okay yeah he was a now, bishop in ame i think if it's in, in, it's AME, AME Z, forgive me if mm -hmm. I don't remember which African. I know it's not CME. Uh -huh. I, I'm just going to be very direct with you that these churches have major, major scandals like this dude, um, uh, Jamal Bryant. I mean, he's the Johnny Appleseed of Black Methodism. How many children are you going to have outside of wedlock in the pastorate? And his father, I mean, people protect him. You know, these churches have so much fraud abuse you're down at the church of god in christ or the church that was into christ okay <laughs> i mean they rape people in the pastor's office um one of my cousins is a descendant of bishop was screwing the secretary bishop ford was screwing some yes my cousins i have fords in my family <laughs> yeah you know what okay, the I, i'm just i'm just saying <laughs> i mean i'm not talking i mean that's why i don't look the, some of the worst people in our community are the religious community. These are the same niggas who turn their churches that never fought for justice or reparations or economic inclusion for our people, and they pushing this damn uh, Margaret Sanger flu shot. What the fuck? Okay, Doctor, we want to talk about too. Like we had talked about the gangster element. Like you know, some of the most popular shows on TV is about black violence and black gangsterisms. And we got this obsession with Italian mob movies. The Many Saints of Newark came out. They tried to help Leslie Odom play up a you know a black mob kingpin in Newark after the riots of '67. What? Why do you think that black people are so obsessed with the mafia stuff, the Italian gangster stuff? You even got these snitches coming on YouTube. You know, people like Sammy the Bull Gravano, the Underboss Bugatti. It's fatalism. It's fast money. It's all the sex, drugs people who are going to live fast and die young and and maybe if you live long enough you can enjoy stuff a lot of black people um are morally and ethically depleted and bankrupt and they basically say hey at least i got something at least i i'm dressed good are you hearing me mm. so i dress good i i look good i eat good i can take care of my mama or my cousins and 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 let's be honest, the mafia 
for the, the, the Jewish mafia, the German mafia, the Irish mafia, all the various mafias were able to use crude capital form, formation uh, accumulation to empower their community. We're the only people who have not been allowed to use criminality mm -hmm. to become economically empowered, to go legit. It's rare that people can go from crime and be legit. Jews were allowed to do it. Italians, to some degree, have been allowed to do it. Uh, the Mexicans are doing it. Lots of people are doing it. It's not us. The economic system is arrayed against us. And we're not going to be able to climb or get to where we need to could be connected to the mafia because the mafia, again, Operation Gladio, the CIA works with the mafia. The CIA, mm -hmm. the mafia are contractors to the deep state, to the dark state, to the globalists, to the narcotics trade. Black people are seen as disposable. So you attract them to crime. You can take their organs, you can experiment and develop cosmetics and, and medicines on them in jail. It is a new way to return black people to the plantation. Under the 13th Amendment, you already know this, but black people did it themselves. They murder and kill each other. We're trying to save them. That's why we're jailing them. So when we're immoral, and we have a lot of immoral black people, black immorality uh, along with black ignorance and self-hate are the three legs of the stool of white supremacy that hold us down. And most black folks, they see American gangsters, they see the nigga in the chinchilla clothes. Mm -hmm. Okay, the chinchilla coat. But a man that used to babysit me would take the heroin from the blue bags. I remember them. Mm. Okay, one of my favorite people, one of the best people to me as a child was a heroin junkie named Mr. Jaluk. Mm -hmm. who shot the blue magic dope and the little bags used to be literally just feet away from the door of my dad's church so mr jaluk is destroyed and generations of black people destroyed my cousin this is what i want to talk to you about dr short because we talked about frank lucas and um well, the other guy that we got a show about a different cousin of mine we can come more on we can talk about this when they just lit out of jail uh uh edmonds a Rayful? I'm going to ask you about Rayful. Well, the, the Edmonds family is from Hopewell, Virginia. My cousin's mm -hmm. the first black mayor of Hopewell. Campbell Ray Edmonds. Campbell for the family. Campbell is part of Bill Cosby's family. There's a whole group of us. We're all from Carolina, Virginia, and, and, and D.C., Richmond. And this boy is selling. We, I used to play with him. I didn't even know who he was. Mm. And uh, nice people. But there's no hope. Well, See, Dr. Short, I want you to explain specifically how, because, you know, I lived in New York, Upper Manhattan for a while, and I love Harlem, and you can still feel all the old black energy there, but how those drug dealers tore down our communities. I mean, but, th but that was by design. The CIA and everybody knows that the basically black people use to warehouse unwanted property until they decide to have a real estate boom. And then you have to step up on drugs, crime, police shootings, and eventually blacks moved out. Someone makes a killing on the property. We lose the equity. We lose everything. Black folks who are smart or so, try to get out, even if they value the house, they can't. Okay, so you use the credit and all that to drive it. The, the narcotics are key to the banking institutions. The banking institutions work with the CIA and other intelligence agencies. So... Black people are basically used as pawns. It's a genocidal thing. It's eugenics. Kill off black people. When they said in the movie The Godfather, let's sell it to niggas, this actually happened. If you buy this book, Operation Gladio, they have the name of the person that said, let's sell the dope to niggas. They were a government employee. Our government is doing this to us the same way our government is mandating that we, in particular, with A2 receptors that are more akin to spike protein attacking our testicles, ovaries, and our nasal passages, us, the same government's pushing it. And by the way, you never get any excitement about this. The same, If we had the same excitement about the government pushing dope in our neighborhood as we did about Floyd George, we'd get something done. Uh, credit, you name it. There's so many issues that Black folks could get upset about. We're shallow as shit, 
and we're poorly led. And the boule and most black educated people are enemies. Uh, when you go to the elite schools, you're basically taught to hate and be ashamed of your own people. If you do not, and I'm a witness, people start telling you you have a mental problem. Uh, you're a dangerous black nationalist. Uh, I wanted to go and study Arabic. I had already done classes and the people said, we're not allowing you to study Arabic. And a guy told me, I know what you are. And I said, um, and I says, what do you mean? I'm a Christian. He says, no, you're a Muslim that goes to church. We're not going to lose you down there. They gave me as much money. I want to go just, you can't go to a Muslim country. You, you can go to any, I, I got to go to Ghana, I got to go to South Africa. It says, we find out you went to a Muslim country, we'll throw you out of Howard. Hmm. Right, so someone tells me how I can think, what I can feel. Um, and if I want to help folks, you take Howard right here in the community. Howard University and practically none of the HBCUs in this country have any real active engagement or involvement with grassroots communities, organizations in this country. Think about it. Does Lemoyne Owens do it, Ron? And that's my knowledge. Elaine yeah, yeah. College doesn't do it. Howard doesn't do it. Bowie doesn't do it. The Clark Atlanta system doesn't do it. They basically the education is the deal is, hey, look, nigga, you didn't go to jail. You could be a sissy or you could get married, but you're not gonna be a person that raises hell or helps other people. And I've literally had people sit down. Professors tell me, sure, your problem is you're thinking about other people. Either you're going to help yourself or we're not going to let you out of here. Are you, I mean, going and helping other people is a problem. And I'll just tell you, Howard University, one of the reasons the students had a rebellion, if they even found out that you went to church in the hood, they might throw you out of school especially if it was a Pentecost or a Baptist church, someone found out that this person doesn't want to be educated. They, 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 they've got too much nigger in them. Uh, when I was in the choir at Howard and uh, our gay choir director, who also knew Chadwick Bozeman, who I also knew when he was at Howard, I knew him in passing, uh, uh, Dr. Norris would get up and say, I don't want to hear niggers singing. I want to hear singers. And one morning he came and cussed us out and says, what, what's wrong with you fucking blacks? All I can hear is fucking blacks. It's hurting my ears. All I hear is blacks, goddamn blacks. Since you niggas want to be blacks, you direct yourselves. And he stormed out of Rankin Chapel and wouldn't direct the choir. Wow. We were too black. And they would always tell us we need to be more. And I'm not talking about 100 years ago. I'm talking about 1985, was the What was the reaction of the class? Well... If you want to get the degree, like the white teacher that hit me in the face with the book that Ron showed you, mm. if I nobody's going to want to hear that a white teacher assaulted me. So you said I, Joe Biden assaulted you. So I mean, a white teacher. Well, but ba basically, well, sometimes, <laughs> well, you're a black woman. Y'all can do just about anything except be white women and have white babies. Right. So I mean, y'all have a different uh, situ situation that you're put in that you can you can either go and complain and then you get into trouble because the black people want to be friends to the white people. There's a young white man by the name of Stefan Arrivi. He's a white guy from French, France with a poor family who convinced the black professors in the Department of Political Science and Howard University's Graduate School of Arts and Sciences that he was from a noble French family and they had a big castle. And he got every kind of scholarship and good treatment because all these niggas wanted to be able to visit his castle in France. <laughs> yeah, it's real shit. I said mm -hmm. it, I stand by it. And mm -hmm. when I exposed that that dude was deliberately infecting black sisters uh, with HPV, there were people trying to have me thrown out of school because I thought it was wrong for black sisters to be sterilized. I talk about black people, Africans, African-Americans, all of them mad and mind your business. And I was being told I was jealous of him getting the sisters. I'm thinking, no, I don't think anyone has the right to infect anyone else. Mm -hmm. So there are people who still hate me because he was such a nice guy. And you know, you're so bitter, you're so racist. I'm racist. They always say that. I was told that when I would call out things that white people would do growing yeah, up because, because when you go to these schools and institutions, they serve 
white power. They have nothing to do with black empowerment, even if blacks are there running it. Mm. Okay. It's the same way I worked at Lane College. Uh, Brother Ron and I met in Jackson. When I was at Lane, there was a white woman who used to be in the Daughters of the Confederacy. She was head of the history department at Lane. And she decided that black children didn't, black students didn't need to learn black history. And all she had to do is suggest then the black dude, uh, Dr. McClure, went with it. That's incredible. I couldn't go into a white school and say, get rid of uh, history of the South. Mm. Uh, you, you see how fast I'd be thrown out of that school or something mysteriously bad happened to me. Mm. So the our education is indoctrination and propaganda for the most part. And we have not. We lack mature black people, very juvenile. And I'm not talking about the rank and file black people, but the Boule and these other people, the proof that they're stupid is you need a nigga to hit you on your ass with the board and make you eat a banana out of a toilet and all of that to be friends to you. I mean, that that's what's required. My parents always taught me to have character and your friends should have character. I shouldn't have to follow the crowd and smoke weed and, okay, y'all, we're all going to gangbang this girl and lie about it. This happened in front of the administration building. Howard, when I was a student and everybody agreed and lied, they raped the girl in broad daylight and nobody saw anything. In yeah. fact, the girl that got raped basically had to drop out of school. These are the people in the boule who run stuff. In fact, black education is, in reality, obedience, doing what you're told. If you have a presidential candidate or politician go to a white school and white kids don't like them, they'll cuss, scream, riot. And when you come to a black college, you'll notice how respectful the black students are. They just listen. That's why people like going to the HBCUs. They have a captive audience. Mm -hmm. We're taught being submissive and being obedient is being smart, not thinking, not being creative. It is a freak to get a George Washington Carver. It's a freak to get these people at our institutions or out of our churches. It's a freak to even get Martin Luther King with all the pussy I, I hope he got and then some. Coretta probably needed a break. That nigga was like a Duracell bunny. I don't even like to think about Martin Luther King in that manner. But well, I, I do. I mean, at least he's normal. They're trying to make Bayard Rustin the leader of the black movement. In fact, we were told this at Harvard back in 1989, mm. that within 30 some odd years, Martin Luther King would be replaced by Bayard Rustin as the true leader of black people. Martin Luther King would be vilified and Martin Luther King would be seen as a person who betrayed gays, he betrayed blacks, he was anti-woman, and Bayard Rustin would be his replacement. And damn it, we're on our way because the Lord and savior of stupid, dumb fuck, traitor black people Barack and Michelle Obama, if it's actually a woman, I think it is. I mean, Lisa Booty's a woman. I'm, I mean, you've got a yeah, booty woman. real. That booty is a perfect team. I can I mean, tell a real booty. I can tell you. You took that thing to gymnastics and that went on the parallel bars. I mean, everybody would just be holding up tears just before she gets up. Look, I don't know why. We're making this movie it. called Rustin to celebrate Wyatt Rustin, who is a CIA asset and a pedophile, and Barack Obama and Michelle. Are about to make by it Rustin by 2023. I think this film will be out. What would that be? 60 or 70 years since 60, yeah, 70 years. 70 years, what would that be? 63 would be, uh, what? Well, five. No, you're only, you're only 63. You say, come on, 2020, it'd be like 60 years. Six on the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington. Mm -hmm. They're going to have buy rust in everywhere. It's the same way y'all weren't paying attention. 10 and 2013, all this stuff was dedicated to buy it rust in 2013 for the uh, 50th anniversary of the March in Washington. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just telling you, the shit's coming and it's going to come through the Black Democrats. It's going to come through the National Congress of Black Churches. It's going to come through Black women's organizations in particular. Uh, Barbara Skinner and all these other uh, Delta Sigma Theta types. And uh, I'm not saying that she's a stud, but a lot of the uh, Delta Sigma Thetas, I mean, they're complete studs. I mean, just look at them. Like the broad that's head of the Congressional Black Caucus looks like a shaved down Santa Claus. I mean, have you looked at that? Broad? I, can't, I, can't, I can't talk about Deltas, right? 
Well, yeah. well, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I don't well, care. My, my sister I, dealt it. I, I don't care. That's just the problem. That's just to look like Santa Claus. You know the Coca-Cola Santa Claus? If you shave the beard and the mustache off, it looks like the sister that's had oh, the Black Caucus. Uh, and, you know, I'm glad I'm not drinking Coke that much, except for when I'm at your house. Um, so mass? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, now not, gonna, to it, not to show it. Uh, I know this has nothing to do with anything right now, but kind of we didn't get to have your opinion about this. But where do mulatto people fit into this equation? Where they where they want to. Uh, some <laughs> folks are, some folks ain't. What um, mm -hmm. to me, it isn't what you look like or what part you are. Okay, um, put it to you like this: When I talk yeah. to people in Africa, they don't see me. They see us as mulattoes. Mm -hmm. So when I get asked a question, I get more respect from Africans when I say je suis métis. When I say I'm a half breed, I get more love than if I try to say I'm black and they're way darker than me. And the, the people are grinning. They're like, okay, they want to relate to us. But when you say I mix with the folks that you Africans really like, because they're in the skin lightener and blonde wigs and shit, man, they, they make, they make uh, Negroes before Malcolm X look modern. Look, it's real simple. Uh, some mulattoes are, some mulattoes ain't. What is lacking for our people is a clear canon of law, rules, customs that we live by and we follow. And you measure people by that when they make one step, even one deviation off of something that would betray uh, black people, that they're out. Uh, Jews have this. We have never developed it. And in fact, there's great resistance to it being developed. Because if you developed a code, a law, a, a rules that we followed, people like Mark Lamont Hill, um, what's this dude, Michael Eric Dyson, uh, a, a lot of these people that are held up would never be allowed to be recognized in our community. They would be seen as enemies. The people, you could have a job, you could be whatever they wanted you to be. Another community could pick a leader that doesn't fit in with us that would never work. We are responsible for creating laws, rules, policies, and such that are necessary for our survival. There's a sister I'd like to introduce you to. Are you familiar with Brother Ramasu up in New York? No, not New York, in Detroit, where they have this movement where they want to create an indigenous nation for Black Americans. And this is their push. And under some of these international laws and things, you can get housing, debt forgiveness, blah, blah, mm. blah, blah, blah. Okay. okay. We have to think more like this. And in fact, the Boule, uh, back almost, uh, well, it's about 75 years ago. It's coming up in 75 years soon. They moved in such a direction. Uh, there's a very good uh, black scholar one of the finest in the country is Dr. Carol Anderson. I believe she's at Emory University. Okay. Dr. Carol Anderson. She is the, just absolutely phenomenal. Okay, one of the greatest black thinkers is a black woman that's not getting her due. Her name is Dr. Carol Anderson. I'll say it. And I hope someone picks up her book, Eyes Off the Prize. She has books on the Second Amendment for guns. She's got all kinds of stuff, white rage. She's brilliant. Her book, Eyes Off the Prize, shows how the NAACP and the black leadership in the country um, betrayed the genuine cause for black folks, which was human rights mm -hmm. and international human rights and not civil rights. They took civil rights to get crumbs, white acceptance, and um, white sex partners and also the ability to pretend and masquerade that they were leading black people to a new dawn and a new horizon. As you know, we've been led into a rat hole and they're pouring ammonia and bleach in behind us. Yeah, I wanna, you mentioned Dr. King being replaced by the Rustin fellow. No, they by got, a, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, by a Rustin. They got a documentary on Netflix called MLK and FBI. It was mm -hmm. produced and directed by Sam Polar, longtime Spike Lee producer of you know editor whatever i met them before when i was in college but they're working on it now because they're supposed to release the files on mlk the national archives and uh at 20, 2027 right, the year before the you know anniversary of his uh you know the, yeah, what yeah, would be yeah, like the right. 70th well, anniversary 
Yeah. I don't know what I don't, I'm getting thrown out by. No, it, it, it'll be it the 60th coming. anniversary, right, of him being assassinated. It is. It is coming. You're right, and it'll mm-hmm. be seven. Um, what I'd say about that is going to be fun to be in the King family all these years with him and his daddy. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine all the jokes? Like uh, you heard about Martin Luther King laughing at uh, Jackie Kennedy kissing the casket with uh, John Kennedy in it. I heard she was upset about him for yeah, some well, reason. Yeah, well, no, That's she heard the, the tape. I mean, it was played back because uh, Dr. King was looking at Jackie Kennedy kiss the casket, and she kissed it just about in the middle. And Dr. King said, "That's the part she's going to miss the most." <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could laugh. That. <laughs> and so you know, when they put this out, Dr. King is ten times funnier than Dave Chappelle. I can't wait. I'm going to really be a Dr. King fan. <laughs> I mean, I mean. So please release the tape, release all that shit. Let it go, let it go, King family. Bernice and them expedite that shit. But I heard of David Garrow, the historian who won a lot of awards, like the publisher off of King's biography. He talked about these things in some of his King's biography books about King being, I guess, human, being flawed. I mean, I talked to Reverend Stephen Vivian. Like pussy. They've made right, a right. Woman in this country, they've made a man wanting to have a pussy cool. But a man that wants to get some pussy bad. I mean, that's insane. Yeah. And to me, I, if Let Freedom Ring came from him, like banging a headboard in a hotel room, if that's what got him to come up with that great speech, you know, God bless him. The, he didn't live that long. I mean, he to me, he had to make up for the short life. You know, it's a longevity. I have to say, I like to keep Dr. King's image, and uh, and maybe this is. I mean, I just like to keep it clean because you, you can't. And, and I mean, but we don't have to. We don't. I don't have. I don't want to know about Dr. King's sexual life. All I, I need don't, to know. We is, don't. We. Don't, I don't want to know about Dr. But what King's I'm saying, all I got to know is that he was a a black man who stood by his family. Short of that, I don't want. I don't want to know about the mistresses. I want to know that he came home at night to his wife. Mm-hmm. But that's just me. I don't no, want to hear you about no this wife that about you know. But I did hug one of his mistresses, one of the great moments in my life. I went up and hugged Dr. King's mistress, and she asked what it's for. I said, you don't want me to tell you. But you don't think by bringing that up, we're tainting his legacy? I don't I don't, uh, even no, I don't think so. No. If I compare that to George <laughs> Washington, I mean, I want to George keep Washington King. raping oh. slaves, George Washington having people's teeth ripped, teeth ripped out of their mouths, George Washington making leather out of black folk skin and jo- and dr king got some skin where it was mutually beneficial to both parties. i mean i get that but we know that he was married so that goes without saying i'm just you saying said the correct one to give it up all the time I but mean, to me we don't have to know different. about the dirtiness of his affairs it's, it's i want to keep dirty. him i want we the kids to know the good things about dr well, dr martin well, luther king we and know these that days dr. And Everybody's these days, flawed, and these days with trans, I don't want to talk it's about a Dr. Good Martin thing Luther Dr. King. King it's a good thing that Dr. King made it his civic duty to bang the black booty. He was and married. This, uh, uh, well, with, he was married. So whenever you move out of that conversation and you bring it up to me, you're dirty in his image. You no, know what? What is marriage these days? Well, let me. Well, what were they okay, those so, days though? And let me tell you this. He didn't want his mistress's information to be out there because if he did, he would they wouldn't have been mistresses. It would have been like if another Dr. name King for it. It would have been well known. So out there, he would have stopped it, doing it. And it's and not it, that the truth doesn't sit well with me, Josh Bra. Is that if we already have very few black leaders, why are we going to bring out the why most, do our the leaders have to be perfect? That's a type of him. black self hatred. But why isn't it enough that he was just married to a woman and he was a uh, good father? He, because, I don't have to know because, about because his because he wasn't. And it's the same way Mr. Hurd had to fight to get rid of y'all yeah, missing um, the point. Get it's rid not of, about his wife of, of this bastard that. from the KKK. Nathan Bedford Forrest massacred thousands of black people, had thousands of black people killed, and white people were able to make him a hero, whether we like it or not. I should be able to have Dr. King be a hero, whether he busted nuts at home or outside the home. But I'm not saying you're not. I'm just simply saying, though, why make that the focal point? I didn't make that the focal point, but America's a sex-charged country. And these days, I think we need a straight black black preacher that was banging, who was laying more pipe than the Panama Canal 
in this age in which all this trans and this other garbage is pushed, I think Dr. King liking booty so much he couldn't wait to get the red eye home. It's it's healthy. Not that I want people to commit adultery. I really don't. But I'm just saying we want to we want uh, what's okay. So if we're gonna talk like that. Then what's the difference between what Lizzo's doing? Then if we're gonna be filthy and be well, Dr. Trash, King's penis wasn't the same hanging. Thing. It wasn't oh, hanging no. out. And if Dr. You want King, decency, we gotta didn't, have it Dr. Across King the board. didn't walk up well, to the hidden camera and say, "This is this is my people in the this comments. Is, this is, if you're this saying is that I'm trying to hide the truth. That is not what I'm saying. We know he had a mister. That's not the point. The point he had is that bring it out. They say he had a baby in Los Angeles. You can't have it both yeah, ways. Y'all want party. shit to be right over here, but then you don't want it to be right here. They like if if, if 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 I, it don't I, make sense to me. Like I, 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 I would say this: Michael Metz having a mistress. I want to hear about his message that he told. Yeah, we know that they did shit, but I I want to focus on. What am I? What are you set. telling me that he busted the nut? What is that gonna do for walk me? Out and let what is that gonna do for me? I can see. Up on him. I can see somebody bust a nut on Pornhub. I don't want to hear about it. I'm talking about Dr. Kinder. King. I don't. I, no. God bless the women that slept with Dr. King. Like I said, I met one of Dr. King's mistresses. I hugged her like we were gonna do it, and it's just like thank you, sister, because if Dr. King, if that little bit of cheating gave him the courage to give a damn about black people versus all these safe niggas that want to cheat, that won't do anything to help anybody. I'll take Dr. King and his mistresses, holes and everything else any day. And I said the same thing of Marion Barry and drug use. If I thought that cocaine, crack cocaine could bring him back and do something to save black Washington. I've never, I, I actually had a vial of cocaine I found at- um, Y'all missing I, our point in the comments. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm not if, about if, hiding if the I history. If I took cocaine, if I could get That's crack to get Dr. I'm sorry, to get Marion Barry to rise up from the grave and motivate black folk, I would go out and get a family pack right now. Okay, I don't care about the flaws of great people. What I, I care no, is no, the no. great things that they did. And in fact, hell no, no, Dr. Show, you're gonna let me talk because I, I ain't no way y'all finna misunderstand what the fuck I'm excuse me, Lord. Sorry, mama, but y'all oh. not finna sit here and misunderstand what I'm saying. The flaws of people are what make them people. If Michael Metz didn't go to prison, if he wasn't a pimp, if he didn't sell stuff, he would have maybe never been Michael Metz. I get it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, Dr. Max had a mistress, and just too, by the focus way. Focus on who Martin Luther King was, and, who he was that speaking with. What, helped, what am I going to get out of that? Him because Betty, Betty had issues with Malcolm. I'm not he, he had a mistress, too. God bless Malcolm X. Uh, God bless Dr. King. And uh, for all we know, Matthew Evers got some extra, too. When you're facing all these things, people trying to kill you, bomb you, tape you, and we're worried about Dr. King busting a nut in some hotel somewhere i mean god bless him as i said if i had money i would give a pension to all the women that screwed dr king because they did something that helped keep him in this life to function it's not that i like people having uh extramarital affairs but i'll make an exception for him and for Malcolm, I'm just saying, on one end, you can't can diss slutty women and then praise them. Which one is it? That's all well, I'm all, saying. All women it's not that I can't handle the All truth. women that have affairs aren't sluts. Lizzo has made it her business to defame black women collectively with her flat pancake ass and her obesity. So, so and knowing that so Martin Luther that, King was married, that don't make you that make you just a that just make you a good ass person, huh? Okay, well, see. You have to ask yourself when you look at how odd the King children are. We don't know whether Coretta Scott King swung both Please. ways. We don't know. I mean, in fact, it's alleged that Coretta Scott King messed with Marlon Brando and other people. So you don't know whether that was an open marriage or not. And I'm not saying open marriages make it right. But um, Malcolm X wasn't always uh, treated like he could have been by Betty. And that story has been covered up. And he had a mistress. Okay, so a whole lot of things happen between married people. Folks aren't going to be perfect until they get to the kingdom of heaven. I encourage people not to be promiscuous. But in the case of Dr. King, when I think about, in fact, he got initiated through the boule. The fact that Dr. King broke away from the boule towards the end of his life, I, I don't care. I'll forgive. I'll 
In fact, I'm happy for him. I would have rather Dr. King screw than smoke, which he also did. Yeah, I have yeah. more problems with the tobacco than the. Look, he's trying to diss me now. Look, don't, don't, don't try to diss I me. Try we, to diss we don't know what filthy dirt you do. <laughs> my shit is up and close and personal. Well, when people who watch okay. my show, you know that I'm not angry. This is me talking passionate. I'm not angry. Yeah, you're fine, you're fine. Comments. I'm not angry, <laughs> but run, you the moderator. You got to control this situation. I mean, it doesn't look my day. Like, I was about to I know you two, y'all are more loose on topics like that. And people were saying I was dropping gems before you coming on, but because you a shock jock, they want to just immediately say, oh, Dr. Show, Dr. Show. And you know, I love you because I bring you on my show and I agree with a, a lot of things you say, but I'm just simply saying that. Never mind. It don't even matter. Well, my thing is about I don't look at it. I don't know what their arrangement was. A marriage is a business. And they had an arrangement. Coretta could have been getting some. I heard some stories about Coretta. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You definitely heard a story about King, but I'm not going to say it's cheating. They had an understanding. Because Dr. King was facing death for 13 years. I mean, he was stressed Every out. Day. Every day, checking the mental institutions. Couldn't go sleep for days at a time. I mean, he said he was salvation. He said that was the only I mean, he had a lot going on. I talked to Reverend C.T. Vivian. No guy. I asked Reverend C.T. Vivian. I, I know C.T. And some C. no guys. I know C. They said, I, I, okay, well, this is what they told me. They said, so if it is true, Doc, so what? They didn't say he didn't do it. They said, so, yeah, if it's true. And they know what Dr. King was doing. They said, we don't give a damn because it wasn't about that. It was about the people. It's not about him. He said, I may not get there with you. We as a people will get to the mountaintop. His last speech was just blocks away from where I'm at right now. He got killed right across the street from where I'm at right now. But he said, we as a people will get to the promised land, to the mountaintop. It's not about him. We make it about King. It's not about his flaws. Dr. King. His ideals were very. We we like the ideas. But my thing is where people who hate our race are going to go, is they're going to go because it's an issue of sex and race. That's where they're going. When we say we don't care whether Dr. King was Alma Joy or Mounds on the road, okay? <laughs> it, it says that you can't take our leaders from us. The same way Nathan Bedford Forrest had thousands of black people murdered and they still have things named for him. Yeah. When are we gonna be strong enough for folks to come and air dirty laundry about certain people and us not care a damn? I don't care. You can hate them all you want. In fact, if black people said, you know, um, we're going to have a day to honor the women that encouraged Dr. King. Do you realize they'd stop yeah. bringing it up when they find out black people think it's cool that Dr. King like knocked off some other people when he was on the trip? They wouldn't want to talk about it. People don't talk about the promiscuity of Hugh Hefner because they know. Yeah. And the people that love Hugh Hefner, you couldn't tell how many bunnies he screwed. Okay? <laughs> he probably got Bugs Bunny, for all we know. But he, he did. He had his vision. I understand you want to keep something pure. Mm-hmm. but they're not affording us under this dispensation and we haven't afforded ourselves. I'm, I'm not, but that's not what I was saying, but I'm going to let it go since okay. everybody so just saying, let Dr. Topic. Randy Short say what he want to say. Don't interrupt. No, it's not it's not, even. Not, this is a discussion. Yeah, I, People don't understand. I bring Dr. Randy Short on all the time. It's like, we're going to text. We're going to be fine after this. Uh, this is how we talk. You think Girl, I'm a okay. What the hell do you think Dr. Randy Short does? What is your passion? Just just a break. For the I, know people are, I know that people Encourage are Encourage all people. the people that are watching this show to be calm a little and listen <laughs> to the sisters speak yeah, on Dr. that. Yeah, Dr. Randy Short. Thank you, John T. Williams. A lot and of people thank you stuff. so very much, very kindly for all that everyone is doing. To move the Negro forward in this country. And if they happen to put uh, our dirty laundry out on the high wire of of media propaganda, we'll stick together as a people. So I'd like to encourage all the Negroes listening to this conversation to understand that we are brothers and sisters, me and Sister Kara can disagree, but be agreeable as human beings. So don't worry about how much I was getting back when I walked this earth. It was un- says unto God and the people to move us forward. <laughs> I mean, that freedom reign, you know. 
From no, it's not a, you don't have to defend yourself. I mean, you, you don't yeah, have to part of you. I, I, yeah. just, I just, I just, like I'm, not, I'm not playing a part of a victim. I just know what me, nah, y'all sexuality gets y'all in trouble. And you, you know, you can't we, just say one thing's okay and another thing's not okay. The we, same we, thing we that got Elijah Muhammad in trouble and all the Muslims are trying to back him up sister. about it. It's like we, if you're gonna say if you're gonna say one thing is right, but then gonna say another thing is wrong, sister and they both Kara, are wrong, let me ask you a there's question. a problem in that. Dr. There's a problem in Dr. that. Dr. King would have gotten in trouble for the men he was associated with that he didn't have sex with. Yeah. Basically, uh, as a black man, you can't do anything right. So in reality, the most intelligent thing to counter what they're trying to do is don't let certain things get you down. I'm not saying that you feel that. I'm trying to say to you, I always encourage people to form marriages, lasting, serious relationships. I don't preach anything else. However, when we shit talk and black people love shit talk more than the enzymes at the water treatment plant. <laughs> then we put a little shit talk in because we talk about CIA and drugs and suicide, eugenics and plagues, and that shit's heavy. So we put a little bit of levity into it. Do you mind? So that's all. And so, no, did I want Dr. King to nail someone other than Coretta? No, but did he do it? <laughs> well, in the words of Andre Kraut, so glad he did. Thank God it wasn't a man. You know, because believe it or not, there's a big movement. I believe that the Obama film is going to try to make it out that Dr. King and Byatt Rustin had some sort of sexual uh, relationship. Well, you know, Adam Clay Powell Jr. kind of alluded to that. He kind of threatened King with the information because they, they canceled uh, Adam Clay Powell Jr. He couldn't even speak at the March on Washington. And we still don't know the greatness of Adam Clay Powell Jr. He did all this stuff that Dr. King and them did back in the 30s with the bus boycotts and organized against business who wouldn't hire black people. He was doing it back in the 30s. But, you know, uh, Malcolm X allegedly wrote a letter to uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, whose birthday was October the 7th. He complained about his marital problems, how his wife, Betty, thought he wasn't that good in bed, even though he had six daughters by her. He said, I used to be a pimp. And when she, she put that in my mind, even though I could be doing good by her, the fact that she told me one time that I wasn't good in bed, it messed with his mind. Allegedly, that's the letter that was on up for auction and, 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 some years and, ago. And it's no secret that Betty Shabazz threw Malcolm's papers out when he was traveling. There's all kinds of stuff that happened in families. It's people. Yeah. But the thing is, is that um, Coretta Scott King never snitched or bitched out Dr. King. Yeah, she was a soldier. And, and on top of that, these people were doing, they were interjecting women around Dr. King, trying to get him to do it. But isn't I mean, it the same information that the white man was using to try to tarnish his image and bring him they're, down? They're trying to tarnish his image. And so what that's what we talked about we, off we camera. Don't, we, don't, we don't give a damn about gay Edgar Hoover. That's what we're saying. In fact, um, I remember being in a lecture. I just learned that one of the civil rights people that worked with Dr. King, who was very nasty to me the one time I met him, he died this year. His name was Chuck McDoo, who was in SNCC. Okay. Is a, a cousin of mine out of Alabama. I just learned this last night or this morning. And we were talking about Dr. King and my response to Andrew Young, not Andrew Young, Julian Bond, who is one of my uh, professors, was mm -hmm. that who cares if Dr. King like Hotel 8? Right. Mm hmm when they brought it up, we basically said good for him. I mean, hey, hey, I, I, hey, Ron, not this, was, not this Chris did he, Smith off did he the get planet. Enough, he did he get enough to share to with his up. friends? If you don't like what I'm saying, you go watch another live feed. No, I won't pay attention to Chris And Smith. I don't know uh, what the comments about that, like so, that. Um, <laughs> but how dare you tell me to shut up? You get your own YouTube and you make your own show and you talk. So, Sister Kira, I said to Julian Bond, my concern was did he get enough to share with his friends? And that's where we left it. And he asked about Malcolm X. And they did the same thing with Malcolm X. He was screwing white women. And my thing is, my only issue with Spike Lee's films that a whole lot of black men are going to want to have white women make scramble eggs and kiss their feet. That was the influence from the film. But who cares, really? Uh, who cares? Most people don't know who Martin Luther King is. I suspect his children don't know who the hell he is. Mm. 
other than the meal ticket <laughs> and treat, treating his legacy like uh, Willy Wonka, a golden ticket instead of standing for something, especially uh, Bernie, I mean, Bernice. Well, you know, Dr. King family was spied on for three generations, starting with his uh, maternal grandfather. By four the or five, back to the, the 1917, uh, the NAC. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying it's by his maternal grandfather. Cause they were very, you know, a very That's important right. political family. But King, I ain't gonna believe, cause you were like 50 something years ago, Jacob Hooper was an American hero. And King was not loved by the American establishment. He wasn't loved he was by well the black community. Black people hated Martin Luther King's guts. But it's flipped now, though, of course. But I said, they that's why I said, do. we got to be careful how we interpret the history and where you get your information on King. I don't know what he really did or didn't do, but it didn't stop him from doing what he needed to do. In fact, and if it helped him, more yeah. power to it. Exactly. In fact, I, I'd buy the condoms and the lube. <laughs> And Dr. King was a pool shock. It was not to Dr. King. It's more than what we... And I like Dr. King. So what we're trying to say is, like, <laughs> I had friends and so forth, you know, um, like I told you on your show, my great aunt was was a stud. But that's my great aunt. And I, wow. anything you come and tell me, if you come and tell me she's a stud, says, I know she's a stud. Why the hell are you telling me this? Right. <laughs> People shouldn't be able to bring garbage to us about anybody in our community that we want to listen to. So if you came you and you said they should or shouldn't be able should to not. So you can't come and talk to me about any of my leaders of people. In fact, if he did or didn't do it, in fact, Adam Clayton Powell had to get run out of Congress uh, and, and unfairly removed, yeah. sanctioned by Congress. But when they went and they asked the people, do you think that Adam did something with his taxes? Uh, they ask people at this church and the people and they're praying and the lady says, I know he did it. That's why I'm here praying. I know Adam did this stuff and we still support him. <laughs> you can't make us not like him. We drugs and the boule and other things have destroyed the respect and unity that we once had as a people. It's the same way I was talking to a brother, Malcolm Shabazz, Malcolm X's grandson's birthday was October 8th. Oh, wow. He would have been 38 years old. Of course, he was murdered in, in, in Mexico, May 9th, 2013. There are things I know about Malcolm, and I will not tell a damn person. I love that brother. I don't, I could have gone to New York Times, all these people called me, as broke as I am, sister, brother. And I told everybody, I'll be an enemy to anybody that says anything about Malcolm that I know that's negative. The only thing we want to talk about is that he was the grandson of our leader. We liked him. He was a young man coming into his own. Do you realize they stopped doing stories on Malcolm Shabazz because they couldn't get any of us to say anything bad? In particular, they called me. And it's like, you're not going to murder his great-grandfather, his grandfather, right? Mm -hmm. Alienated from kill his grandmother and put it on him. And, and do and me kill the grandson, and I told the people the New York Times to fuck themselves. It's it's not happening. You can't pay me to do that. And what it'll be ten years and two years, and don't you think I could just write a book? Say I got some dirt on the Malcolm X phone. I could take. I don't want to talk about that. You know what? It's funny you brought that up because of Malcolm X nephew, the 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 son of Ella, the one who was his benefactor. Yeah. He tried. He wrote a book about his uh, uncle called the Seventh Child or the Seventh yes, Son. Yes, Seventh Son. And he said that the publisher about Collins. Yeah, yeah, I know. I talked to Rodney Collins. Yeah, I talked to him from time to time. But he was saying, "Give me his was, number. We need to talk." Okay, I went to his. He went to his publisher. The dude said, "Do you want to write a book or do you want a bestseller?" He said, I want both. He said, you can't have both. You either write a book or you do a bestseller. What he was saying is, do you have any dirt about your uncle that we could put in this book? Because, you know, Malcolm running buddy, Malcolm Jarvis, the one that Spike yes. played at Shorty, he I'm wrote a book sure. that tried to put that out because they've been floating for years, starting with this white professor named Bruce Perry, that Malcolm was a, a male prostitute. Yeah, well, Bruce Perry's and, book, Malcolm X, it came out, I think, 90... Yeah, early 90s. 90, like, 91, 92. Yeah, 91, it, something like that. And yeah. he made it out. Look, Malcolm X outed himself. If any of what Bruce Perry said was true, Malcolm said he was the lowest deviant until he got with the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. 
So Malcolm basically, with dignity, said I had a trashy life, whatever right. that means. But so he wasn't Malcolm X. He was Detroit Red at that time. But the yeah, he wasn't is, Malcolm X at that time doing if that. If Malcolm X boinked some white men and that helped him reject the garbage later in life, I would rather him know and had that experience than be weak like a whole bunch of folks who've never done something, never been anywhere, and they always tempted to thinking when Malcolm X made a break with the trash in his life, he made a complete break. So, and, and as a person that of faith, a person has the right to say, I've given my life to God, or there is no God, uh, but Allah and Muhammad's his prophet, he says his Shahada. If he wants to follow Islam, if that's what gets him together, uh, even though, you know, I'm a Jesus nigger, then I honor the fact that he wants to make and has made that change in his life. What I think is trashy about racist white society that put us in these situations, a lot of the crime and uh, deviance and stuff is, is an issue of poverty, exclusion, and social alienation to create the environment for these things to happen through zoning. Zoning is a scientific way to get negative outcomes for people developed at the University of Chicago and it is applied to black people across this country as the cities were growing. Then they made this hell and then they're wondering why they smell fumes and smoke. There's smoke on your clothes. Well, God damn it, you made a furnace that you put me in. When are we going to do that? In fact, that's what I hate about nigger plantation preachers. They do not preach the word of God and they never come back with the Jeremiahic indictment of this larger society. Because if you want to see white folk get the hell away from you, start telling the truth about who and what they are. They run like you sprayed roachberry on them. Instead, these days, when someone says Dr. King's a whole, my question is, why would you have a pedophile deviant person that liked being pissed on named Jared Hoover run a government agency for 40 years? Right. And, and as well as he failed to stop narcotics and organized crime and white slavery and everything else. And you mean, you want me to get concerned that Dr. King busted the nut 50, 60 years ago, he should have busted nut. He didn't kill nobody. He didn't rape nobody. He didn't launder dope money. He didn't credit redline people. He didn't maintain a system of apartheid eugenics and genocide against the people. And you want to tell me at the worst, Dr. King humping on somebody could produce a life even when he's doing wrong. Something good could come of it. That's what I would say about Dr. King. I couldn't care flying damn about what people who hate my guts think about people that matter to me. It's the same way I got barred from a radio station because they wanted me to talk bad about Marion Barry. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, this, I think is a lesbian journalist, wanted me to call Marion Barry corrupt. And I had to read the director. You mean corrupt? You mean he liked women? I says, most men like women. That's why we have a human race, because men like women. I think my father liked my mother. I bet you your father liked your mother, too. You're standing right here. <laughs> okay, then you know what? And I said some other stuff to her about how fake certain black people in journalism was, so I never got invited back on the show. Uh, but I embarrassed the hell out of that broad. Don't ever come to me to talk about Marion Barry, who gave me my first scholarship, who gave me my first job, who built all this housing and all, and brought black people, black folks were getting a third of the contracts in the city, we don't get 1% right now. And you want me to yeah. criticize Marion Barry. I, I almost cussed her out on air. And one thing, Marion Barry was not corrupt. He had flaws. He, you know, he loved pussy and drugs, but he made a lot of other folks wealthy. He went to school, high school, right down the block, several blocks that Booker T. Washington Marion, Marion school Barry was in home. Memphis. He tried to hit my mother up for ass. I mean, Marion I mean, he, he was corrupt though. But he just loved I didn't say he was corrupt. No, I'm saying when home. people say he corrupt, he didn't. He, he died broke. If he was corrupt, he would have died with some money somewhere. Absolutely. But you know, he got oh, betrayed. Yeah. he got betrayed by the Boule and other. People. Of course, they yes, sure yes, sir. did. In fact, Eric Holder, a Caribbean, a non ADOS, a non FBA, a sellout, vicious, no good, so and so. I did that. In fact, my father grew up with the mother of the lady that they trapped him with. And the whole family got destroyed behind that. They don't even talk about it. All right. Um, so I don't care what my enemies say. In fact, if it's something I do that upsets my enemies, it makes me want to do it more. 
what black people have been misindoctrinated by their coon preachers and others is that we have to go along and get along at all times with people who hate our guts. That's pure insanity. You're supposed to make your enemies miserable until they'll get along with you because they get tired of you. Yes, okay, we're going to wrap it up the show. I want to okay. have like Sister Kara. Thank y'all for spending time on this Friday. Three hours come by so fast, but we had a fun. But Sister Carrie got thing, last words, thoughts, what you want to add? Well, we got the all black convention in um Orlando coming up. You saw the flyer that Run showed earlier. You can go on my Instagram at Care Dangerous if you want to come and join us. There's gonna be a lot of big um, influencers and black voices, uh popular black voices that people like to hear from there. Um my show care dangerous talk uh will be back on roku and fire tv soon i don't know the official start date for season three yet but we had some great uh guests on including dr short and run you can um download the never level tv app it's a black on it's the largest black on streaming network never level tv uh, so we're doing a lot of fantastic things and you know on my show we just learn we talk to a lot of scholars like dr short uh talk to celebrities comedians therapists all kind of people so you can really learn a lot and we love to hear from the people so show doing really big things i'm excited about it and um thank you again for inviting me on the show tonight ron as i always sister kara keep on living dangerous by provoking thought and doing oh you. yeah <laughs> and definitely y'all you know sign up to a youtube channel she got a lot of great content coming like you said just wrapped up season two with never level tv also, she got some interesting interviews from season one on her YouTube channel as well. Last interview was with um, Muslim Reza Islam. That was a really good episode. Tried to bring on um, Jane Elliott, um, the educator who did the uh, Blue Eye Brown Out test. We'll have her on again for season three. Um, uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins has been a guest. I mean, people like uh, Omar Gooding, uh, just a lot of different people doing a lot of different things. So thank you all again for the support. Excellent. And Lawrence Duke Elton, we love you madly. You keep on producing and pushing. Dr. Short, your closing thoughts, words, and how we yeah. can support. Well, what, well, let's just say this very quickly. I need to remind everybody uh, there's a situation where a black woman who had a medical emergency was taken out of her car and brutally and viciously mm. beaten within an inch of her life down in Arizona. It's being covered up in the news and um, it's criminal. It's criminal that these things happen. It's criminal that this man, uh, so a lot of atrocities have happened. I want people to really think carefully about who they're gonna support politically. I don't worship one party or the other, but Biden has been a complete disaster and he will continue to be a disaster at the border, in your neighborhood and everywhere else. Uh, and I also want to say to people, follow your people who are telling the truth. They're making it harder and harder for people to tell you the truth. And uh, uh, the other thing I will say to you is that I have two books. One book is Slavery's Mastery, which I'll show you. You can get it off of Amazon or you can get it from hollismedia.net. Um, it's it's a little pricey, but uh, support it. It's, it's a good read. It's an excellent read. My other book is called um, I Am Spartacus. It's talking about that crooked Negro, uh, um, Cory Booker in New Jersey, who's part of this whole mandate madness. I want you to pray for DC. There are more and more police murders here, more crime here more repression here. We have a no good mayor. We have a whole bunch of no good butch uh, stud mayors all over the country. DC's got one, this thing that looks like Arsenio Hall with the process. Um, wake up, I mean, and, and so, you know, find out what's going on. As for me, I wanna let you know, I am in the process of launching a uh, magazine called The People's Report. I'm in the process of populating now. So if people are writers and want to get stuff published from a black perspective, you can reach out to me. I'm working on getting uh, control. I am at present, whether people recognize it or not, the owner of Black Agenda Report magazine, whether people are doing what I want or whatever, eventually that's going to 
be worked out. So we're going to be able to put stuff out in writing as well as in video form. Please support me. Um, I always need, Ron always needs, we're always doing something. I got, uh, whenever there's something, like I got a family in Uganda, I got a kid that has corona, I want to send some books to make certain they get out alive. Had to save their father a couple of days ago. Um, you can send money to me at uh, dollar sign, Dr. Randy Short, Dr. Randy Short, and I have Zell. And PayPal, which is wrandyshort at gmail.com. I'm Randy Lancaster Short in Instagram and in Facebook. And I'm wrandy I, I short, I think, in Instagram. And email me. Uh, uh, let's communicate. Uh, we like uh, doing conversations. And the People's Report will probably be, be out next month. It'll be the first. And also, I write for Natural Hair Magazine. Shout out to Sister Latoya. Uh, Natural Hair Magazine has a million followers, and I'm one of the writers for it. And, of course, support uh, Kira Dangerous. Support Ron Hurd. Um, uh, I've known uh, Kira about a year, just about a year. And, I mean, we try to help each other. And I've known Ron about, I met Ron in 2012. Okay. It was the 2013 February down there in La Lithonia, Georgia, of all places. Right. Sydney so McKinney. Um, we try to help each other. So there's a lot. And I also encourage people to watch the film Buck Breaking. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have seen it. There's another film called uh, Black, White, and Blue. It's on Amazon and Vimeo. Uh, and there are many, many other things. Uh, I got interviews everywhere. Before they pull them off, watch them. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I download the interviews. I, I always yeah, enjoy that for I, sure. I, and I do have a YouTube <laughs> channel. They may take it away, but it's Jesus. Randy Lancaster Short. Yeah. I, he posted I, it. I posted yeah, it. Man. Yeah, posted Randy Lancaster. It's it's short. I need like you mm, almost a thousand. I need a hundred and fifty people, I think. And and by the way, they have my channel shut down. So, but I have videos to put up there. And last but not least. Like I said, if you send me donations, one of the things I'm trying to do is pay for a bunch of trademarks. I need them. So expect the people's report. Um, I may even be on InfoWars as a panelist. I don't know how long they, that I'm going to last because I'm honest to people about race. Um, but that's it. Let's help each other. Uh, let's support each other. Love each other. And... Um, and pray, people, because uh, this is a bioweapon. Anybody that wants to get sincere, genuine, cutting-edge information on the situation with this pandemic, you got my email. I'm in touch with the frontline doctors in a very real way. And I want to say this to you, that there are things that fight this issue. We can talk to it offline. I don't want this video to get pulled. But I want to let you guys know, as much as folks hate Donald Trump, he was the only person that tried to create a series of options for how people treated this bioweapon. He's the only one as ratchet and repellent as he is to many of you. And I want to say, um, when, history, when history reveals that me... And people like Ron supporting me and then two other folks were able to get Trump to try to intervene to save the lives of hundreds of thousands of black people. That the Boule, the what I call the National Association of Black Jerk Off Artists, all of the black groups who have been funded by the big pharmaceutical companies have decided to allow the masses of black people to die. So if you hear me speaking strong language, it's coming from strong love and a strong anger against people who have betrayed black folks as a collective. B1, FBA, ADOS, and as I say, as DACTA, descendants of aboriginals and forcibly trafficked Americans, I say God bless you and good night. And um, also, before I forget, um, I got a new show coming out, Care Dangers Outside, where I interview people face to face. 
and I go to different um, black companies and um, do interviews. It's, it's coming out soon, so just be on the lookout for that. Also, the Care Dangerous Talk website will be up and launched soon. I also have a lot of black writings on there. You'll get blogs from me talking about insights to different guests I have on and behind the scenes and what I thought about the person and things like that. So be on the lookout for Care Dangerous Outside coming very soon as well. Oh, thank you, yeah, thank you. like we white, send us a piece. We need some donations. <laughs> yes, just pretend that this is a white televangelist, like your grandmother buys the million dollar Bible from the racist preacher who thinks <laughs> black people under the curse of ham. Oh, yes, y'all can help us out. We'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all for listening and for being open, receiving in mind, heart, body, and spirit. Also, thank you to the supporters, the moderators. Thank you all for helping uh, keep everything flowing in the right direction. You know, it is what it is. And also, let me read this disclaimer right quick. <laughs> well, he has to do that. If it becomes I'm on your show. <laughs> no, I do this for every show. I do it for me. I, I just like, I just kind of, we were living in weird times. It's like, you know, this is like how it was back in the 30s or something. But the views expressed by host and guests on the We All Be TV platform are not the That's official views. Mind opinions beliefs or perspectives of we all be news or the we all be group incorporated we all be news is an organization that thoroughly believes in supplementing the information narrative that is usually supplied by the corporate news entities with those viewpoints and expressions which may be marginalized or ignored for a plethora of reasons we are about informing the general public on alternative perspectives as it relates to news and information and letting the general public be the ultimate judge in deciding on how to use said information. Informed citizens are responsible citizens. Thank you for your support. So I want to thank everybody for being very patient. Like I said, time goes by very fast. So much to cover in so little time. So if you like the words from Brother Herb, please spread the word. We all be TV on YouTube. You also like Dr. Shows, you can support us, cash out your support. <laughs> right here. Dollar sign R2C2H2. You can Google Pay, PayPal, or Vimo. Or, I mean, Zell your support at r2c2h2 at gmail.com. You can Vimo at r2c2h2. You can uh, wear art of his art. Go down below the description box to our Teespring uh, official store. Also, you can buy art of his art, r2c2h2.com. So, thank you all once again. In the words, great Duke Ellington, we love you madly. But also, like I said before, if you can't make it, but you should check it out, we have the the 2021 Jimmy Lawrence for Legacy Awards coming up Halloween night. We're going to be honoring uh, Unzi Horn Sr., Madam Florence McLeod Talbert. Uh, the Tim Priest will be performing. Uh, Bev Johnson, Valletta Brinson, and also Dr. Bobby Rush will be in the house. Uh, it's going to be a very fascinating thing. You know, he got his book out. I ain't studying your book. Mm -hmm. It's uh, pretty good stuff. I brought uh, several copies for fam family and friends, but yeah, it will be streaming it online, but you know, check us out if you're in town. So thank you, Dr. Short. Thank you, Sister Kara. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, to tune out, to get in where you fit in. Like I said, in the words of Great Duke Elton, we love you madly. Y'all keep on producing and pushing.